Cricket fans and greetings from the Caribbean. We are coming to you live from Sabina Park for day three in this round six match between the Jamaica Scorpions and the Guyana Harpy Eagles. Andrew Chan in your company to start proceedings alongside my good friend, the legend of Jamaica, Mr. Marlon Pinnock, Pinny, who is now doing some adjustments to his, uh, his man purse there. Making sure he has all his equipment ready for today. Good morning, Penny. Good morning to you, Mr. Andrew Chang. Good morning to our viewers. Beautiful morning at Spina Park for day three action. The RB Eagles in command so far, Andrew. Going into this day three here at Spina Park. Yeah, of course, uh, just one li one wicket left in the Jamaica first innings to take. That's uh, 153 for nine. That's how they ended in reply to the Mammoth 424 posted by the uh, Harpy Eagles. Hundreds from Kimal Savory and uh, Tevin Imlock unbeaten. Now, Romain Morris is coming out, and he is carrying an injury. Uh, I actually saw Justin Beckford with the gloves warming up. So I'm not sure if Romain Morris is capable. And uh, even when he was doing the warm-ups, he wasn't doing the full stretches that the rest of the team is doing. So it certainly seems that uh, Romain Morris will just try his best to hang around as long as possible this morning. And of course, Marquina Minley batted extremely well yesterday. He's in that 45 deliveries. Yeah, but the question is, how quickly can Guyana wrap this up? And what's going to happen afterwards? Uh, more than likely, they're going to put the Jamaicans straight back into bat. And uh, it's up to the Jamaica Scorpions, of course, to try to make a game and salvage. A, I think they can uh, at least try to salvage a draw to the penny. Um, I mean, if they can bat... If you think about it, if this first session doesn't, uh, or this first innings is completed very shortly, however long it lasts, if they can at least bat a day, then that uh, would help in erasing the deficit. And then if they bat maybe a session or a session and a half tomorrow at least, then they can uh, put something on the total and try to make a game out of it. Well, these are now the Scorpions batting this season. Highly important. I knew and lightly that was going to happen. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but this, it, it, that's the whole nature of the four-day game, isn't it? Somebody can stand up. It, it's how Kimal Savory and how Tevin Imlak and uh, how good a case Moti stood up in, in Guyana's first innings. Niall Smith will start proceedings. They'll be bowling to Marquino Minley. Oh, bouncer delivery, and that's the edge, and that's the end of the innings. Well, 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 it only took one delivery, 153 all out are the Jamaicans. And <laughs> well, 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 Penny. A good shot delivered here by yeah. Nyla Simit. Marquina Minley had no clue, and the Scorpions lost their last wicket this morning without a run on the board but i think i actually called it i said jamaica and <laughs> they can get they can get that first delivery uh, that wicket on the first delivery of the day beautiful bouncer from uh niall smith let's have a look at the replay on it just to see how the jamaica scorpions inning ended cracking delivery absolutely cracking delivery had to play at it for a short fellow, Niall Smith really does generate a lot of pace and a lot of bounce. But that is the end of the Jamaica Scorpions innings. 153 all out, a really, really poor batting effort from them. They trail by 271, and more than likely, they'll be back out in uh, 5 or 10 minutes, uh, about 5 minutes, <laughs> to bat again. Indeed, excellent performance by the guy in the RP Eagles to restrict the Scorpions. 453 hats off to them, but it's up to... They are eagles to see what will happen for the Scorpions.
Action resumes here at Sabina Park, and interestingly enough, the Guyana Harpy Eagles, despite a lead of 271, have elected to bat again. Marlon Pinnock is scratching a, a hole in his head because he's as confused as I am. Good morning again, Marlon. Good morning to you, Mr. Andy Chung. Good morning to your viewers once more. It's going to be Daniel Beckford. He's behind the wicket for the Scorpions. Morris was injured yesterday, and hence why... Daniel Beckford getting the opportunity to do some glove work for the Scorpions. But the Scorpions and the back foot early on the three here at Sabina Park. Yeah, they do have double green back on the field, so that's good to see for them. Um, but interesting, what, what are your thoughts on, on, on Guyana batting again? Well, based on what we have seen, how Guyana plays cricket, all is going to bat again. But from my point of view, I think Guyana should put the Scorpion into bat again. Yeah, it's a, it's a surprising situation. Unless, the, of course, I mean, they're trying to get a little form maybe in for their opening batters. Tej Narin Chanapal and uh, Raymond Perez. So that's the state of the game. Uh, will, it will be that man, Duval Green, to start proceeding from the southern end of the ground. It is good to see him on the park as well. Didn't see him on the park yesterday. The only time we saw him is when he was batting. And didn't stick around too long either. But the Scorpions really and through here at Spina Park. On the back foot early on day three. As my good friend Kimberly Forbes would say. It's got to take a miracle. For the Scorpions to come back in this encounter. One thing for sure, though, it's a beautiful morning here at Sabina Park for cricket, though. Beautiful sunshine as well. And a glorious day for the guy in a batters to get some runs as well. Leading by over 271 runs. A big lead here, Andrew. Yeah. The massive one. Tage Chandapal will take first strike. Raymond Perez is on the other end. Chandapal this season. Just scoring one century so far. Got in a few starts as well. It's just not capitalizing on the start. If you realize in this year's regional championship, the batters dominating so far, aren't you? Yes, indeed. A lot of hundreds been scored this season. And that's good for West Indies cricket as well. Good for the Caribbean. First ball. Back of a length delivery first up by Derval Green. Wonder what's the plan of the guy and guy and guy and Arab Eagles. Full two days to go. A lot of time remaining in this encounter as well. I definitely think the Harpy Eagles will bat up to T and have a crack at the Scorpions just after T. First run of the morning to teach the Ryan Shonda Paul and the first run for the Harpy Eagles as well. The strain on the line of the leg stump this time was Derval Green. And easy pickings for the man that plays test cricket at the highest level for the West Indies in T.J. Ryan Shonda Paul. Struggled in the last tour. I think some persons have it to say. His technique, Andrew, yep. is one of his main downfall. Now, these two struggled uh, in the first innings against the uh, Jamaica Scorpions. Uh, just one and two, respectively, for Chan, Paul and Perez. So, I think... Uh, 
uh, really relish an opportunity in the middle. I think that's what it's all about here for Guyana Harp Eagles. It's not really, they have time and uh, you, you still have a day plus, uh, almost two days really. Um, and you have a lead of 271, so you might as well just bat a little bit. Make sure maybe get that lead up to back up to 400, maybe 350, 400 or more. Realize DJ oh. Ryan Chandler Paul struggled against Australia. Yeah. Struggled against the moving ball. Good delivery. Excellent delivery there by Derval Green. But it's good to see Derval Green back on the park as well. Mm. As I mentioned earlier, he's a fighter. Yeah. Couple months away from thir his 36th birthday as well. The Scorpions have a lot to play for in this game. They are very far behind in this contest. As I mentioned, the RP Eagles dominating precision from the second session on D1. And now on D3, so far, they are in command. Scorpion players getting injured. Morris got injured yesterday and hence why he had to retire hurt. Keep good delivery to complete the first over of the Scorpion innings at one without loss. Yeah, quiet start. Good over from uh, Green to start. And it looks like OJ Shields will be taking up action from the northern end of the ground. So it's a good bowling performance by the uh, guy in a half Eagles, however you look at it. Five for 55 for that one, Vera Sami for more. Two wickets for Isaiah Thorne as well. OJ Shields picked up four wickets in that first innings for the Scorpions. I think it was four, four hundred and five. Made that seventeen wickets in regional cricket for him so far. Let's see how he starts here on D three for the Scorpions. Already two man. Out behind square. Looking for a quick single there, and uh, once again, a good hallmark of the Guyana batting. Looking for those quick singles there, and uh, easy in the end. Taking a look at what's going on around the region. Well, the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, having declared on 591 for 7, the combined campuses and colleges are in response 168 for 7. Barbados Pride had declared at 542 for 9 as well. But the Leeward Islands, Hurricanes, in response, a very, very good response for them. They're 161 for 1. Mikhail Louie on 49, Kisi Carty on 91. So that's good stuff from them. And they are showing why uh, they're fighting at the top of the table. 
feeling for that one outside the off stump was Perez, but it was always swinging a little too wide. And over in Antigua, the Windward Islands Volcanoes, they were bowled out for 162 in response to Westerny's Academy 158. And then now the Windward Islands Volcanoes are currently 219 for 8, so they lead by uh, 222. Athanas making 89, 41 for Hodge and 41 for Ambrose as well. That's a lovely drive that's gone square. But there's a field out there and no, he won't catch it. That goes through the extra cover region or the cover region, I should say. Got good timing on that Perez. I didn't think he got enough on that, but it's a beautiful drive in the end. Yes, over pitch delivered there by OJ Shields. Terrific timing there by Perez to get his first run of the morning as well. And it's a boundary. And he's actually doubled his score from the first innings with one shot because he only made two in the first innings. So that shot alone will give him a world of confidence here, Penny. <laughs> Definitely. Ah, and that's a beautiful follow-up there from... OJ Shields almost had him squared up there. You can see on the EVP here. Oh, pitch of a delivery. Excellent from OJ Shields. Good follow up delivery, as you mentioned, Andrew. Yeah. In the first innings, the Scorpions jump. Seven catches, Andrew. That is Indeed. Weird. Cost him a lot. Good take. Oh, no. Half stop by Justin Beckford. No, it actually isn't half stopped at all. I thought he got enough on that poor fellow. And he will concede his first buys as a stand-in keeper. Just tying oh, no, on the way uh, through to him. Yeah. Just went through his legs there and went all the way down to the ropes for four. Got in an awkward position to take that penny. Let's have a look at the replay on this one, and Penny can analyze what young Beckford did wrong. It's got up too quickly, maybe? Yes, definitely. In terms of the Red Force CCC game, No foot movement there from Perez. But yeah, the combined campuses colleges, uh, 172 for 7. Uh, Anderson Phillip with 4 for 52. Keon or Otley, or that should be Yannick Otley, I think, is on 29 unbeaten. Um, Camille Puran again with 40. But the, not the scores that you want to see at all from the CCC penny at the end of the over. 10 without loss after 2. Because if you look at it, Damel Evelyn, 14, Kamil Puran, 40, Siddiqui Henry, 12, Shamar Brooks, 15, Demario Richards, 2, Rashawn Primus, 18, and Romario Greaves, 18 as well. So they're all getting starts again, and that, that's been the problem with the CCC. They just haven't strung anything together at all properly, and which is why they're rooted at the bottom of the table. Without a win under their belt as well. A lot of cash pot scores there for the Combined College on campus yeah. team. I mean, if you look at, okay, according to the, the Cricket West Indies championship structure, the, uh, the West Indies Academy and, and CCC are considered as developmental teams, so that's all well and fine. But I think with the CCC, they have a mixture of players. They have, for example, Shamar Brooks. They, of course, had Jonathan Carter leading them earlier in the season as well. And he did have a couple of scores as well. But they really should be competing. Uh, and even the West Indies Academy has, has registered a win. In and fact, it was two wins. Yeah. <laughs> And those are all bunch, a bunch of young fellows who really have almost no experience at, at first class level. And the youngsters from the West Indies Academy as well scoring hundreds as well. Yeah. 
But the other thing, it, I mean, the CCC offers a pathway there. Y young Kirsten Kalicharan, who again was selected at the beginning of the series, is, is a player with a lot of potential, but hasn't fulfilled that potential. It was an opportunity f for him to show his potential. Nicely played by Chandler Paul, gets that square, stood up tall. He's a little bit taller than his father, his illustrious father, Pinny. <laughs> Great Shivna Narayan Chandler Paul. Yeah. But, but Shiv Narayan Chandler Paul, I had the opportunity to meet him in Barbados as during a, a West Indies New Zealand tour. And Shivnarine Chanapal is absolutely built of titanium cords. He's just strong wires. He looks like a small man. He looks like a slight man. Remember him square 100 here against Australia. Yeah. I think that same game, Brett Lee knocked him down here as well. And he came back with blood in, the, yes, yeah. in his eyes. And scored a tremendous century for the West Indies here at Sabina Park. No, but there, there's some there's some Chandapal re, uh, legends. I think that uh, the legends, and, and and I'm not sure if his his records will ever be broken. I mean, there's the one that he, he batted, I think, a thousand minutes without being out in Test cricket. And then I don't know if you know this, but Shivnarayan Chandapal is the only man to ever hit a six off the last ball of an ODI to win it. And the, the thing is... I think that was of Chimin of Sri Lanka yeah, as well. Yeah, in Sri Lanka. I, at the Queen's Park Oval and I was there. But the interesting thing about that game, Penny, was that the West Indies needed a six to win. It was not like <laughs> we needed four and he hit a six. We needed a six to win. That's so great that money yeah. is. So players have hit a six before of the last ball of a game to win, but you, you might have only needed one or two or something like that. West Indies needed a six, and he hit that six of the last delivery of the game. And he realized Shivnar and Shandapal as well, among the fastest to score a century in Test cricket as yeah, well. Yeah, a counter attacking innings against Australia, no less. So he's a batter who can change gear at any yeah. given time. Wild heaver that one. Ill advised from Raymond Perez, but he gets away with it. 11 without loss after three. What was Perez thinking there, Andrew? Just a wild swing. What was he doing? Maybe Derval Green getting into his brain. <laughs> I mean, I guess he can if he wanted to. Your team is 281 runs or 82 runs ahead of the opposition. But why would you do that if you get the opportunity to put them in and then you decide to bat? Russia blood. <laughs> Maybe inexperienced stripping in as well. Eagles giving their top order batters some chance as well. But I think I'm correcting in, in saying that uh, Shivnarayan Chandapal and Tejanarayan Chandapal are his father son pairing to play cricket for the West Indies. Good half stop there by Beckford, did well on that occasion. A wide wayward delivery from Shields. He realized after the ball pass, the batter continues to swing away. The skip and then the dive from Beckford. Just Jamaica, uh, uh, Jamaica would have had some father son combinations that would have played cricket. I think Dave Bernard Sr. and Dave Bernard Jr. would be, the, uh, would be um, that. Um, they'd have brothers in Robert and Marlon Samuels.
clipped away for an easy single out to the and then well square. I mean they were they're, they're actually three generations of Headley cricketers the George Headley and then his uh, son Ron Headley and then his grandson Dean Headley played for England I think Ron played for Jamaica as Dean well. Headley was a fast bowler as well yeah, yeah Headley was a fast that Dean Headley I think when I was growing up I, I, I actually see him bowling at a tender age <laughs> Well, I remember he came to England. Uh, he came to the West Indies as part of an England tour. But one of the greatest moments I'll ever see in cricket, you see T. Jaran Shandapal batting with his dad in a regional cricket game. Oh, very nice. <laughs> and that must have been quite the experience. <laughs> oh, my word, it was a game to remember. father counts his son <laughs> at the wicket <laughs> and I mean I don't think uh, that's a lovely pull well I mean of course the most iconic thing about Shivrani Chan Nepal is his batting stance and I don't think a batting stance like that will ever be replicated or, or come about in cricket again we'll actually have a a batter from Pakistan as well. Similar stand. Similar. That's forward Alam. Yeah. But it will never be as pronounced as Chanapur because he was basically, <laughs> he was straight on. And actually, he was good as well. Just going back to back centuries of Pakistan. Yeah. Against the West Indies as well. That's played nicely. Just rid the, rode the pace on that one. Open the face and down to third man for four. Across this electric Sabina Park outfield. Elegantly played by Perez. Down to that vacant third man boundary. And these are valuable runs to the RP Eagles. So these are some of the groundsmen here at Sabina Park. Just sitting. Not in one of the best mood here at Sabina Park with the Scorpions behind the eight ball on these three here. Andrew, if you are the captain of the Scorpions, what would be your plan on these three with your team in this position? <laughs> well, it's a it, it's an interesting one obviously you, you have to limit them and, and stress them out so that so the good delivery from shields to follow up um yeah so of course you have to play conventional four-day cricket you have to limit them from scoring at the end of the over 18 without loss and uh I mean, you have to believe, of course, that you can bowl those 10 magical deliveries to take those 10 wickets. And you have to back your fielders to do that. You have to back your fielders to assist, them, to assist the bowlers in doing that. I mean, at some point, let's say, let's say Guy and a half Eagles bat through this first entire session unscathed. Then after that, you'll have to look at, okay, let's try to contain because they're clearly, we're not getting the wickets that we need to limit them. So let's try to contain them and put even more pressure on them and dry up the runs as much as possible. That's all they have to do right now with the Scorpions. It's essentially just dry up the run until Guyana get frustrated and either declare or whatever happens. Because the other thing is, I mean, of course, it could be the other thing is Guyana want Pumal and their spinners to operate, Duval Green to continue. The other reason that Guyana might be batting is because they want Pumal and they want their spinners to operate on the last day. Maybe it might make it easier for them on a pitch that, that will have the wear and tear of the fourth day, which is why they, they're batting again. In addition to getting that, uh, that time in the middle that their batters probably want and need. But if you realize over the five games before this, the Scorpions played, I think it's only one time they managed to score over 300 runs. And already the lead is 
289. So that goes to show how commanding the Harper Eagles is over the Scorpions so far. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the fact of the matter is that right now the Harper Eagles hold all the cards, even if the deck was stacked. <laughs> It's stuck towards their side. They hold all the cards. They hold all the chips. They hold everything. So it's up to the Scorpions. Are we going to make a game out of this? Are we going to, what are we going to, what are we going to try to do? Because let's just say somebody bowls a magical spell and they get five, a five for a six for it in, in quick time. Then all of a sudden you might have the momentum to say, okay, yes, I believe that we can chase 350. Because we have the time. We have a day tomorrow. Might end up with a, with, with a session and a half here still. Yeah, but it all boils down to believe. And believe in your team. Believe in yourself. Yeah. And so far the Scorpions haven't been believing in themselves as you see on the field so far. Good delivery. Stylish leave alone there by teacher and Sean Paul as well. Just playing yeah. inside the line. Yeah, played well inside the line of that one. Didn't even have a sniffed at that one. That's how she shields. But a weakness, I think, with Chandler, with Tage, is that uh, he, he can get squared up. So Dubal Green, that, that, that was a nice delivery in terms, of the, in terms of the length. He just has to get that line a little bit straighter to him, yeah. Maybe just under the nose, I would suggest. Aim for the throat area, maybe. I think he could be a foot up more as well. Yeah. Well negotiated this time by Tage. And this is excellent cricket by the RP Eagles. Realize it was an acres of space on the onside. And just tucked that ball and shot us through. Yet another single to the RP Eagles total is up to 19. And stretch the lead up to 290. But in terms of in terms of your um, in terms of your cricketing pedigree, Penny, who are your major mentors and influence influences on your game growing up? Well, actually, it was Xavier Marshall. Mm. That's my friend for life, man. I remember playing. For St. Anne with Xavier Marshall in the team as well. Remember, got a hit on my finger. And then in the same game against St. Thomas, I actually got a hit through my helmet. Yeah, you still wear the mark as well, don't you? Indeed. <laughs> I was feeling under the bat as well. It was a short ball. Your hands, your hands weren't as fast in your youth. <laughs> well, as fast as my hands was, I couldn't prevent that from happening. It was a short ball from Xavier Marshall himself, a part-time bully, you know. Christy Jones turned across the line and pulled that ball, just stuck on in my helmet, and the rest was history for me. <laughs> well played by Perez. Soft hands and the quick single taken. 19 20 without loss. Actually, some discussion here between umpire Christopher Wright and of course captain of the Scorpions Brandon King OJ Shields will be continuing will be bowling to Perez who is on 10 from 17 deliveries Guyanese in their second innings 
20 without loss here at Spina Park. That's a wild one. Good half stop there again by Beckford. Really like a goalkeeper there, tipping that one over the bar. Ooh, that's a <laughs> as a short man, he reminds me so much of Colton Ball Jr. <laughs> Very short indeed. Good wicket keeper as well. I think he's feeling it on his finger as well. <laughs> Welcome to the wicket keeping game, a young man. I'm guessing he would be familiar with it if they've given him the gloves to a certain level. Well, of course, he's been around the setup for quite some time now. I'm yeah, sure he'd brother. love to take his first catch as well, Penny. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> But it, his glove work generally does look tidy. I mean, if you if you look at his retrieval from the fielders and everything else. Well, he keep for the U team as well. Yeah, he's a good wicket keeper. Butter. I think he's hoping for Lucas Cricket Club as well. We have no shortage of wicket keeper batters across the Caribbean. Do Not we? at all. But. It, you look at the performance, that's where they lack performance. And when I say performance, lack performance with the bat. Wild one, excellent take by Beckford there. Probably saw that very, very late. Swing at that one, had Chan Nepal down the leg side. A lot closer to him than he thought. <laughs> yes, it was pretty close. But if you realize where Beckford is standing, I think he's too far. I should say too far left of the stumps. Yeah, but there's that there's that gap between fine leg and deep backward square leg. They're just dangling it in front of him like a carrot. I mean, obviously, they'd be looking for a top edge for the pulls as well. Oh, doesn't have his radar on this morning, OJ Shields, which is disappointing. I would like to see Marquino Minley come up because, of course, Marquino Minley would have been rattled by that uh, snort he received this morning to, get to, to, to dismiss him from Niall Smith and end the Jamaica first innings. Realize OJ Shields not getting enough pace out of the wicket this morning. Ball dying on the way through. Wicked keeper Daniel Beckford. But she has to remember what he did in the first innings, and he got both opening batters LBW. Full, fast, and straight. Yeah. Well, that's what he should be striving for. You realize Captain Brandon King setting an attacking and a defensive field as well. Is it defensively attacking or attackingly defensive, Penny? Anyone you want to use. <laughs> Is it more attacking or more defensive? More defensive. It's more defensive. <laughs> it's defensively attacking. Okay. More attackingly defensive. I don't know. <laughs> I 
A pleasant good morning to our fellow commentator, Jerome Foster. I think he's going to Hawaiian party later, Penny, based on his uh, shirt wear. Very bright blue. Shocking blue. He, <laughs> we he was wearing the red of Manchester yesterday, and now he's wearing the blue of Manchester today. So don't know where his loyalties lie. <laughs> but he hasn't issued me his ticket yet, my ticket yet, because I would love to go to a little Hawaiian Jamaican party. The great Jerome Foster. What do you all call it? Is it a runner boat when you're when you're doing a, a barbecue, a, a grill? Yeah. Nice cut there, fierce from Chandapal. A runner boat is it, Penny? Indeed. At the completion of the six, twenty-three without loss. I like how you also use rims as a. As a grill, as a as a pot, as as a as a basin for your fire as well. I think that's very ingenious of the Jamaicans. You have a group with that in the country as well. Wood fire, we call it in the mm. country. <laughs> yeah, we, have you ever gotten to a party and they don't have one, so they say, "Pity, lend us a rim," and they use one of your your Jaguar rims to to run a boat, Penny. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> or you lend, or you lend them the Rolls Royce room because it's even bigger. Of course, of course. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> and deeper as well. I prefer to lend them the Subaru rims. They cook more chicken on it. <laughs> I prefer to lend them the Subaru rims. Mm. Very quick. <laughs> you conduct heat well, Penny, for the bar for the barbecue. <laughs> Devil Green will continue. Doesn't seem to have any ill effects from his injury on the first day. He bowled quite well, first inning and second innings. Still economical, not taken a wicket. He did take one in the first innings, and that was Kevlon Anderson. Still having a hinder as well. Landed badly. I think it was on the first day. But it's good to see him back on the park for the Scorpions. Yeah, it's sort of strange uh, that the Scorpions have ha are having such a bad season because you have a character like Duval Green, which sort of epitomizes the fight. You know, he's 35, 36 years old. He's a fast bowler, he's fit, and he's a fighting all rounder. So, if you have a character like that, you know, th that's in the dressing room, that's always fighting, that's always pushing, it's disappointing where the Scorpions are. Beautiful delivery. How did that get through everything? Excellent take as well by yeah. Daniel Beckford. And you have a I think it was angling on the leg side, but it's very, very close to that leg stump. <laughs> Let's have a look at the replay on that one again. Yeah, it's good to see Chadwick Walton back here at Jamaica, back in the setup as well from franchise duties, and he's still around the setup. Chadwick Walton is 38 years of age, Andrew. He's, he's a, a very fit fellow as indeed. well. Indeed, he's, he's like amazingly fit. Good delivery, searching outside the Aston was Perez. And he has a name like an English lord. I always remember his name. Chadwick Antonio Kirkpatrick Walton. And he scored the only century for the Scorpions this season in regional cricket. Mm. 163 against the Combined yeah. College on campus. Yeah, it was a good score.
pleasant drive to the Gaksha Cover region. Let's close on his bat on that one did Raymond Perez. That was a shot of authority. Glorious shot over pitch by Derval Green and caught the treatment it deserved. That shot had four written all over it. He tends to hit the ball very hard outside the Austin, Andrew. Yes, he does indeed. And he realizes he's not getting close to the ball, but his arm swing is very quick. And that's a result as a fast bowler when he over pitch. And they realize a few deliveries before Derval Green was in the face of Perez. And this time around with that shot, he just turned and walked back straight to his mark. As you can see, Perez using his bat to talk. <laughs> Tremendous timing as well. Nicely driven again. This one is a little bit square on. This one will run into the ropes as well. Back to back fours from uh, Raymond Perez. That one's a little bit wider from Duval Green. So he could have lent on that one nicely. Terrific timing as well. He's very strong outside the house, mind you. And we need no second invitation to see that as the 32 run partnership comes up. 41 deliveries already. Diana Arpa Eagles taking command of the first session this morning on day three. That completes over number seven at 32 without loss. It's a beautiful shot of the George Hedley stand here at Spina Park. Beautiful ground as well. A number of regional and international cricket played here at Sabina Park. And a lot of outstanding performance as well. CPL as well, that's Caribbean Premier League. This is where the majority of the Jamaica Talos game played as well. This is where Christopher Henry Gill scored CPL 100 as well. He realized the Scorpions really and truly this season have been suffering with fast bowlers due to injury as well, Andrew. Back in the days when I was coming to Sabina Park to watch Jamaican play regional cricket, when a Tamar Lambert was captain in Jamaica, Jamaica was doing very well, winning titles after titles. This one is clipped nicely by Teacher and Shonda Paul out to deep, backward square, or yet another single. So the RP Eagles total is up to 33 without loss. If you're ju just joining us, the Scorpion lose their final wicket this morning. With the very first delivery from Niall Smith to Marquina Minley. He was caught by the wicket keeper. And he didn't had a run to the overnight total of 153. And of course, the Harpy Eagles didn't enforce the follow-on. And they are batting at the moment. 
And they are 33 without loss. And over number eight with bowl here by Marquina Minley. Good delivery. Pang on target is Minley. This is his first over in this innings, is Marquino Minley. Started up and down in the first innings. But in the second spell, he came back, Marquino Minley, and hit some good areas. But unfortunately, didn't have a wicket in the first innings, though. Let's see how he copes in the second innings already. The Harper Eagles lead by 304. Edged. Edged. And that one is past the first slip down to the fine third man area. Minley finds an edge, but the uh, Jamaica Scorpions only have one slip in place. If there was a second slip, that would be a regular, yeah. a regulation catch. But in the end, no second slip. And four runs. The credit. To That's Perez. really unfortunate there. I mean, if you ask Raymond Perez, that was an intentional shot because he <laughs> saw the gap. Um, well, he was playing away from his body. Just a bat. But I, I really don't understand why they don't have a second slip in for Midley. He's ugly, arguably the, quicker, the quickest of the Jamaican pieces on show today. And he beats him again outside the edge. Beautiful delivery. And that is out, actually. Justin Beckford takes the catch. And Raymond Perez goes after an edge through the slips. He gets a regulation edge to the keeper. And that's the end of Raymond Perez. Marquin Lou Mindley gets his first wicket. Beckford gets his first catch as well. Excellent delivery to follow up by Marquina Mindley. And also one of his softest dismissal you'll see in cricket. There's a feather of edge to wicket keeper Daniel Beckford. And his first catch, as I mentioned. And the Guyana Arbor Eagles lost their first wicket with the score on 37. Centurion in the first innings. The captain of this Guyana Arbor Eagles, Tevin Imlock, scored 101 in the first innings, not out. As you can see here on the wee page, just a feather of head shoot to the wicket keeper and an easy catch as you get them. And a disappointment for Perez. That's Roman, Raymond Perez. He goes caught for 22. Yes, yeah, so the Guyana Happy Eagles are effectively 308 for one penny. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. <laughs> And almost a day and three quarters to go. <laughs> Still 80 overs remaining in the day's play. Plus another 90. That's 170 overs remaining in this game. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, man, there's a lot of cricket left to be played. So Marquina Mill in his first over struck for the Scorpions. His first wicket of the game as well. Had to his first class tally. No, 128 first class wicket to him. Ooh, good leave. Good delivery. Came back sharply off the seam there, Andrew. Yeah. Kept a little bit low as well. That's not good sign for the Scorpions, though. <laughs> Batting last on this wicket here at Sabina Park. Ooh, that was mighty close to the off stump. Good judgment here by Tevin Imla. Brilliant judgment by Tev Kev Tevin Imla. 
don't know if he just ran his hands across the seam of that one there, Mindley. Well, it's a different Marquino Mindley we're seeing in the second innings, and it's a good Marquino Mindley. That's beautiful. That is angling in maybe a little Ooh, bit too much. Tight. Yeah, the umpire signals that is going on leg side. Uh, we'll have to have a close look at this one, but this is a brilliant testing over from Marquino Midley. Well, we'll have to see this on the replay. That looked very close from up here. That is very close. That's a really, really close one. Umpire Christopher Wright. Not interested. Let's have a next look at this, Andrew. In real time, that's very close. The umpire thought that it's going on leg. Let's have another look at the replay on it. And uh, if you can just slow it down for a little bit, Dylan, at the end of the over, really, really good over, 37 for one. He's across a little bit. I would say it's struck maybe in front of middle and leg. That is very close. Yeah. I would, I would have said it's, a, it's adjacent um, because, of course, Imlach did come across his stumps a little bit. But because of the angle of his leg, the umpire in real-time motion would have, would have thought that maybe, it was, okay, it's heading down yeah. leg because the angle of his front leg was, was quite pronounced. Derval Green will be continuing. Both fast bowlers operating now for the Scorpions have over 100 first class wickets as well. Derval Green have 111. And Marquina Minley have 127. And in fact, all Derval Green wickets are for the Scorpions. Marquina Minley as wicked for the Barbados Pride and also the West Indies Academy in regional cricket. So for the Scorpions, Derval Green is the leading wicket taker in regional cricket at present. And they certainly need, to, need him to add to his tally this morning. I drive again my channel for just digging it out. I'll get a single. You realize it's a different Marquino Minley in this second session here. I should say second innings. Well, we've only had one over from him, so it'd be nice to see him continue that good work and not get carried away because it really was an impressive over. Uh, could have got two wickets in that over as well. Yeah. Well, if there had been a second slip, it would have technically been three, even though it didn't. Perez didn't uh, trouble him. The very next delivery got him out after the edge through slips. And you see, Devil Green has two slips, so I don't understand why there weren't two for Midley. Beautiful, beautiful feeling for that one. Didn't get his foot out as much as he would like, Emlak. And that's where Derval Green can be very dangerous to the right-handers. Yeah. He tends to get the ball to swing away from the right-handers and into the left-handers. And he's very skillful as well. Still can get the ball to nip in as well, off the seam. That's a peanut man here at Sabina Park. Not much spectators here to sell any nuts though. <laughs> Beautiful again. And Devil Green, almost a carbon copy of a delivery. Good delivery. Asking questions, Devil Green. But Imlach, is, he's, playing, he's playing away from his body. He's not getting to the pitch of the balls. It's, it, it's, it's at that good length where he's not sure if to come forward or come back. And, not, and then he's just fending at it. Devil Green continues to be very impressive in this game so far. Just not getting the results he wanted in the wicked column. This one a little bit straighter and Imlach gets bat on this one. 
He's been so economical, poor fellow. And <laughs> I think that, that that's what's even more annoying. You bo you're bowling excellently. You're bowling. He has only conceded 14 runs in five overs, just about five overs. And it was a similar situation in the first innings. Even though he didn't bowl as much as you would have liked, obviously, with that injury. Plays that one a lot more comfortably and confidently. There's Imlaka in the over. 38 for one after nine. There are all five overs, none for 14 so far. Excellent spell of bowling. Just not been able to get a wicket to his name. Let's see how Marquina Mini starts his second. First was a tremendous over. For it's a beautiful shot of that sea. Out by our review. Durville Green. And I'll take my leave now and let the Jamaicans uh, take, it, take it over for a little bit. Marlon Pinnock will be joined by the dulcet tones of Jerome Foster, the Blue Hawaiian today. <laughs> Marquina Mini, very impressive. This morning, and this is what you want to see from the Scorpions. As I say, special welcome. <laughs> to one of the greatest in the business for a number of years, Mr. Jerome Foster. Yeah, after, well, morning, definitely not anywhere close to being great in any part of this business. What is great so far is that Guyana Harper Eagles, they have continued to dominate this contest. And I'm not surprised by any stretch of the imagination that they have decided to bat again. And I actually support the decision to bat again because given that the Scorpions were able to rest overnight, they, were be, they would be a little bit less fatigued in terms of coming back this morning to restart or to bat again as short as that first innings was. Psychologically, getting them back into the field and putting more wear and tear on their legs is also important to the Harpy Eagles. I think the Harpy Eagles are assured that the Scorpions will not get 309. They're just ensuring that they get them as jaded as possible and wear them down for as deep as possible and put them under severe pressure. We expect them to bat another 30 overs or so, wear down a pitch that has been solid throughout, but with more sun on it, more heat. You want it to break up a little bit more for the three spinners. And I think they have been spot on and they're playing the cricket the way how it has been written or how it is supposed to be played. You run your opposition into the ground. They're only playing three fast bowlers, two fast bowlers and a medium pacer in Ali Mohammed. And they didn't bowl a lot of overs yesterday, those two pacers. But what they're doing now is knowing that the Scorpions are wounded. Their wiki keeper is not on the field, their number one wiki keeper. So they're putting them under pressure. They're getting them back into the field. The two openers, Carlos Brown and Javon Buchanan, they know that it's a massive task ahead for them. But being out in the field weighs on their mind even more and weighs on their physicality even more. And that is why I think the Harpy Eagles decided to bat again because they could have easily bowled again. And even if the Scorpions get to 450, you'd probably say 180 to win, they would be okay with that. But it's just beating them some more into the, this hot 
and humid temperature here at Sabina Park. A short delivery from Tejan Ranch and to Tejan Ranch and Paul. And he will go to drinks here for the Harpy Eagles at 39 for one. He's on nine. Imlock, the captain, who I think is very, very lucky to still be there, is yet to score. They lost Ramon Perez for 22 of Marquino Minley. And remember the Scorpions. Only one ball ball this morning to wrap up their innings. So a 310 run lead, an hour to go before lunch here on day three for the Guyana Harpy Eagles. So we await the resumption of play here. Another 43 minutes before lunch. And this is the penultimate day of the sixth round clash between the Jamaica Scorpions and the Guyana Harpy Eagles. And it has been all Harpy Eagles from that first two hours on day one. They have wrestled the advantage from the home team and they have not let go since. In case you're wondering what's happening, the Harpy Eagles are technically 310 for one in their second innings. They are 39 for one now, but an overall lead of 310. And they got a first innings advantage of 271. Thanks in large parts to Vera Samipramoa with five wickets. Niall Smith had one. 
Isaiah Thorne, two. There was one for Gudakesh Moti and one for Ronaldo Ali Mohammed. And now we're seeing Tejaran Chandapal, who scored a century in the last round. Struggled in the first innings. And he's now trying to push on for the Harpy Eagles. They're now 40 for one. And speaking to Captain Tevin Imlak yesterday, he was saying, had they dismissed the Scorpions yesterday, they would have bowled again immediately. But given that the Scorpions would be able to go home, they were going to reconsider their decision and come with a plan today. And even though the second innings, the first ball this morning of the Scorpions' first innings was used to wrap up the day, to wrap up the innings, they still decided to bat again. And as I said, I understand why they have done so. Not many will agree because you probably think that the fast bowlers for the Harpy Eagles would have rested overnight. But I think they're looking at the conditions. It's hot. It's going to be hot for, for the next couple of weeks here in Jamaica. There is no rain in the forecast for the next couple of weeks. This is in the air. This should be out. Oh, no. What a tame way to go. He's upset with himself. But that was soft. As soft as you could get. Derval Green strikes again for the Scorpions. As you saw there, a lack of bounce. Being the downfall for Chanderpaul, who was looking to pull that one. Didn't get up as he would like. And it skied it, Ramal Lewis. You won't get an easier chance than that at this level. It's now 41 for two. Team, team dismissal there by teacher and Shonda Paul spooning a catch to that mid down area. Ramal Lewis took an easy catch and Terrible Green picks up his first wicket in this innings. And a very important wicket to him as well. The West Indies test open batsman TJ Ryan Shonda Paul goes caught by Ramal Lewis off the bowling of Derval Green. He went for 11. So 41 for two. The guy and RP Eagles in their second innings. Glorious morning for cricket here at Sabina Park. And not much spectators here. There's a lot of stands here though. A lot of bench empty in the stands. The Scorpions looking to fight back. Lead of over 312 Foster. It would take a miracle if the Scorpions are to pull off victory on the final day of the six round fixtures at Savannah Park. Yeah, Kevin Anderson. Didn't really stick around in the first innings, but the stage is set for him to play an enterprising innings. And based on how the game is positioned, this is perfect for someone like him, a very attacking player. I think he has to give himself a chance. Didn't give himself a chance in the first innings, just played a wild whoosh. I was dismissed by the man who has the ball in hand was caught by Romain Morris then. He won't be caught by Romain Morris now because he has been replaced by or substituted by Daniel Beckford. Played the under 19 World Cup in 2020 along with Kurt McKenzie. Same World Cup that Jaden Seals played. And he was the standout player. And that brings an end to the 11th over. A successful one for Derville Green. The Harpy Eagles 41 for two. So far in the second innings, these two fast bowlers of the Scorpions, Marquina Mill and Derville Green, doing an outstanding job with the ball. And this is what they wanted to see in the first innings from the Scorpions. They are low. Guy and Arab Eagles to score freely. After
to 61 for 6. They are loaded. Guyana RP Eagles to post 424. That was a marathon for them, Foster. That's why they were dismissed for 153 in their first. Bang on target is Marquino mainly from. He got the ball this morning in his hands. They realized Marquino mainly getting the ball to swing into the right handers. He's using the crease as well. This is good for Marquino mainly. Didn't play from round three to five. Now he's back in round six. And he's one of the most experienced players in the Scorpion lineup as well. Yeah. I think he played over some 50 something first class game as well. I just think that the Scorpions, they missed him in some of those games. Just his control. That's a nice shot from Imlock. Has so much time on, in his shot, Imlock. And he sounds like a level-headed player as well. Sounds as if he understands what he wants to achieve from this sport. And he understands his game to a T. He hasn't played a lot of cricket at the highest level, obviously, has not yet made his debut. But he's obviously one that the selectors have under the microscope and in their periphery. And so I have back-to-back -back centuries in this regional championship so far. Beautifully played by, An by Anderson, who also played in that 2018 World Cup 2020, I should 20, say, World yeah. Cup where Daniel Beckford and Kurt McKenzie featured. And as I mentioned, Foster, he's an aggressive player by nature. Yeah. I think he played two under 19 World Cups. I thought, I'm also sure that he played the one that was staged here in 2022, if my memory serves me right. But I'm sure he played the 2018 version. The 2020 version, beg your pardon. The 2021 for sure, but I'm gonna double check if he played two under 19 World Cups. Several of those, several players from that 2020 squad have gone on to play for the West Indies. Different formats. Matthew Ford made his debut recently, made his debut in December against England. As I said, Jaden Seals has gone on to play. Kurt McKenzie has gone on to play. And it's good to see the youngsters coming out of the West Indies under 19 programs and doing so well at the regional cricket and getting to the West Indies senior team as well. That's a plus for me in the region, Foster. That completes the over from Minley. Has one for seven. Tidy. That's Mr. Courtney Francis. And Mr. Crookshon. From the JCA. Consistently hitting those he areas outside the Alstom. A testing line been employed so far in this spell from Durval Green. Already account for one wicket so far. A wicket of Tijner and Shonda Paul. Durval Green always been asking questions.
see on this occasion. Oh, there's been a fighter for the Scorpions. But Foster is all in, in and out of the Scorpions team as well due to injury. And that's a sore point for the Scorpions for us bowlers as well. And now Morris as well as a wicket keeper. Turned away there by Imla. Hence why the young Daniel Beckford getting the opportunity to do some wicket keeping for the Scorpions in this innings. It's a beautiful shot of the skies here at Kingston, Jamaica. Clear skies, absolutely no threat, as Foster mentioned earlier of any showers in Jamaica or in Kingston Jamaica I should say um, and must be a proud feeling as a family for the Beckford family that is because one of their sons is in the 13 man squad which is Justin for this game Daniel was part of the provisional training squad and now he's a main part of this game seeing that there's an injury to Romain Morris and it's only a week apart these games short delivery from Green it's only a week apart these games so <laughs> there's even a possibility that young Daniel could make his debut could make his debut next Wednesday if Romain Morris is unable to get fit and if you look at it, I wouldn't say a week apart. <laughs> yeah, a couple of days, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> well, the match schedule is a week apart, uh, yeah. but, they, but in between the games, it's three days. Indeed. Yeah. But there's a strong possibility that Chadwick Walton might be back as well. So, you we'll left to see what happens there. But it must be a proud feeling as a family to see your two sons getting closer and closer to their dream of playing for their country and even so playing for the West Indies. It's 43 for 2 after 30. proud for the family if the both of them meet their debut in the next round <laughs> yeah. if you realize they chain together they do everything together they yeah. traveling the same car to the match yeah, yeah. that goes to show oh the bond is strong in the family foster the family tends to come out and support them as well yeah. i want to steer down to point for a single getting my radar right here so yeah the family I remember that Justin Beckford was the captain of Wilma's boys last year at high school cricket or in high school cricket Wilma's won all but one trophy and that would be a pro mo moment as well for yeah. Andre Bryce yeah, the family was there at every game Daniel Beckford was there at every game that I went to because some of the games are carried on television the T20 version of this of this it's a schoolboy cricket competition is on television but the family was always there and they also have a, a sister and they travel around and they support young Justin so that's just the possibilities that we're thinking about what is happening now is that the Harpy Eagles they're on top that one died in front of Beckford. It has been a struggle for him at the start because of the lack of pace here on day three. Encouragement for the Harpy Eagles, as we said, because the Scorpions have to bat last on this wicket. 
It's not flying through as we saw on days one and two. Yeah. Couple of deliveries bouncing in front of him and dying in front of him and he has to be getting his pads in the way. He has taken a couple of blows as well. Remember growing up, my dad used to tell me everything he used to play cricket is very tough. The bat is tough, the ball is tough, the wicket is tough. So as a player, you have to tough as well. And Daniel Bickford showing just that for the Scorpions behind the stump so far. Going to give you the lunchtime scores around the region. And today is a very special day in West Indies cricket as well. And left alone nicely by Kevin and this is so at lunch. The combined campuses and colleges, 204 for 8 in response to 591 for 7 against Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. I think the Red Force might well and truly enforce the follow-on there. Leeward Islands Hurricanes, 184 for 3 in response to 542 for 9 declared by the Barbados Pride. Casey Carty made 109. Kyle Louis made 52 turned away to Derval Green who's a fine leg Anderson gets off a pit well a pier not a king pier but a pier that's his 13th delivery and that's a run to complete the 14th at 45 for two the other game is the West Indies Academy and the Windward Islands Volcanoes wow the Volcanoes they're stepping on the accelerator they have 245 for eight that's a lead of 249 against the West Indies Academy. And I said today is a special day in West Indies cricket. Even though the trophy tour has started for the ICC T20 World Cup. Today is the day that Brian Lara made 400 to reclaim his individual batting record in Test cricket. And that was Antigua Recreation Ground. Yeah, that was in Antigua 2004 against England the greatest for many <laughs> he was still is for some talk highly about Jordan Johnson as well and that youngster is very special as well Foster tends to give his wicket away very soft at times look at that Kevlin Anderson first class career playing 12 game 801 runs at an average of 42.1 not a bad average strike rate is over 53.5 has the talent and by the way he only played one under 19 World Cup he only played 2020 and he had a century in one of those games so well rated it's Kevin Anderson and that's the selectors of the Jamaica Scorpions as well. Nick, that's Odin Brown and of course Carlton Ball Jr. Yeah, and Brown is in the black shirt with the shades on. And the light of the two and the short of the two is Carlton Ball Jr. Carlton Ball Jr. has the most centuries for Jamaica in first class cricket. Now he is the coach of the Lucas Cricket Club as well. They're doing well. <laughs> That's unfortunate. They, they lost to the Jamaica Defence Force in that quarterfinals last Saturday. Saturday, Sunday, I should say. Semi finals will be played this weekend with Kingston playing St. Catherine and, of course, Jamaica Defence Force playing St. Mary. So, after this over, I'll take my leaf. And hear from Mr. Andrew Chung. Oh, so it would be a clash of the final in the semi final. Clash of last year's final in the semi final. You're absolutely correct. And the defending champions is St. Catherine to beat Kingston here at Sabina Park in the finals.
that nice same delivery from from green you remember that same finals Romain Murray scored a hundred as well the St. Catherine should be a little bit on the strength because well, both teams will be but St. Catherine will be without Pete Simon. they will be without Carlos Brown and that well I'm only saying that if this game goes past today because they should be playing for the Scorpions and Kingston will be without Buchanan as well Buchanan Morris I don't think King will be playing our Kurt no. McKenzie. Oh, brilliant. Turned him around square. But he just bounced in front of the tallest man on the field, Pete Salmon. And a survival there for Kevin Anderson. And been that type of game for the Scorpions. It started so well for them. It went as if it was it was on course to being very perfect. But it has just disintegrated into chaos. And it has been all Harpy Eagles. And I was just uh, giving some background to the viewers who probably want to understand the dynamics of Jamaican cricket. So the Senior Cup, for the senior cup is the two-day competition that is used to select most of these players who we see on the field. Even though it's a franchise system, most of all the players in the Jamaica team are from Jamaica. Only a few teams around the region have players from outside their respective territories. And actually, this season, I think only Windward Islands, Volcanoes, and Leeward Islands, Hurricanes have people from outside of their territories, based on what I can recall. CCC and West Indies Academy are developing teams, so they obviously are not bounded to be in a territory, so they will be using players from all over the region. But the six territories, only two are using players from outside, I'm joined by Andrew Chan, who are kept a little bit low again on Imla. Yeah, um, well, I, I mean, of course, uh, the Cricket West Indies makes that, that talent pool available. The, these the selected players that can be picked on and, and transferred onto any team. Um, I was actually thinking about it earlier, and, and, and with, the, with the issues that Jamaica had with, the, with their fast bowlers in terms of, of fitness and stuff, they could have dipped into that pool and uh, maybe tried a play or two. I mean, O'Shane Thomas as well has turned out. Is turning out yeah, for the Hurricanes. So you could have called on him as well. Tucked into the onside for no run. And based on what I'm seeing, Andre McCarthy, who is not playing, is a possibility for the next game. But the pool is not as wide as you'd probably think. There is Shalom Parnell, who plays, who played in the Super 50 recently. There's also Kari Campbell, left arm pacers, those two. Both played for. Melbourne CC. There's also Andre Dennis who plays for the Jamaica Defence Force. Haven't seen much of Nicholson Gordon who did so well for the Jamaica Talawas in the 2022 CPL which the Talawas won. Yeah. yeah. Haven't seen much of him. Was yeah, well, he's been in and around the conversation. Yeah. Has been a training though. I've seen him at training but I haven't seen him in the squad this season. Lost his contract this season as well. So those are probably the, the players outside of what we have here. And obviously Gordon Bryan is injured. Beautiful delivery. Yeah, Minley has been absolutely on point in this uh, second innings. And his figures are reflecting that as well. And I think what he's trying to do now, because he did it very early to Imlock, where he drew him over, drew him over to that fourth, fifth stump, and then he had that big nip in swinger. Yeah. Wrapped him on the pad earlier. The umpire said it was missing. Not from my, not in my view, but he's the one that matters. Yeah, it was quite adjacent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a questionable decision, but uh, we give the umpires the benefit of the doubt, as always. Too full. Nicely driven, driven by him. Lad. Yeah, it's going to go into the boundary. You can give up that chase, Carlos Brown. Diving effort from Kirk McKenzie. It wasn't good enough. To stop that ball from racing into the boundary. The Harpy Eagles continue 
to dance away in this Jamaican sun. It's 49 for two at the end of the 16th over. But I, 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 in terms of what you seen from Midley in the second innings, he's trying to pitch the ball up, he's trying to get the ball to swing, as opposed to the, uh, the first inning where he was really just very erratic, too much short pace deliveries, uh, short pitch deliveries, I should say. Um, focused really, really nicely here. A good spell here from Durval Green as well, but yeah, that's what you expect from Durval Green. Economical, on point. Finally got some reward as well with the wicket of uh, Chandapol. And it's been all pace so far for the Scorpions. Testing to this top order of the RP Eagles, who didn't fare so well. By the way, Tevin Imlock said the recovery job, he labeled it as ridiculous. The 61 for 6 to that 424. And that tells you how surprised he was about all that has unfolded in front of his eyes. It's just unbelievable. And I was having a discussion with one of my, my friends in terms of where the scorpions got it wrong and it's, it's obvious where but what could have been done differently someone who i played a lot of cricket with as well and he was suggesting to me that at 61 for six even if the partnership developed between moti and savory and the 50 comes up for the harpy eagles 50 for two even if the partnership developed for 15 to 20 overs he felt as though enough pressure was not on the Harpy Eagles, that's Gordon Bryan, by the way, who was injured earlier this season, the fast bowler for the Scorpion, still recovering, rehabilitating. He felt as though there was no pressure on them to do anything extra or different. They were just able to pick up their singles, able to wear down the bowlers, and then the, the home team got frustrated, got impatient because the first six wickets fell almost in a cluster. You didn't have to worry. But once there was something developing, the Scorpions ran out of ideas. And he's saying that, similar to what happened yesterday with while King and Man Singh was trying to repair for the, Harpy, for the Scorpions, you saw the difference in the field setting where the Jamaicans were forced to take risks to score. And he said that probably that is what should have happened while the Harpy Eagles were 70 out for six, forced them to do something different to score the runs rather than just pinching runs. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think what uh, ep epitomizes it in the Harpy Eagles batting performance was uh, was that Pete Salmon was just bold. He just he, he wasn't really offering much. He wasn't as effective as he has been all season. Yet he was just continued he did continue to bowl him. Yeah. And I think you were saying a similar thing to what my colleague was saying in terms of you were not impressed by what the Scorpions were doing. No. To keep pressure on the harpy Eagles. yeah they were just going through the motions it, yeah. it really was and even and, and of course your your point was a feeling as well and yeah. you saw the harpy eagle the urgency to find singles create singles that's something the scorpions could have picked up on and, and, and shrove a little better at that they could have created a run out chance created a wicket something like that I know the game is out of their reach now, in my estimation, but I am not they all be in sports. But just look at the, bo the, the body language of the players now, and you can see the difference as well. Mind you, the Harpy Eagles had 400 runs on the board, so they obviously they had reasons to be excited. But again, the Scorpions are just waiting for something to just happen for them. It has been a good spell from Green and Minley in particular. And another run to complete the 17th at 51 for two. The run rate is now three runs and over. But you just feel as though more could have been done in that first innings.
So we're going to see spin for the first time. Abhijay Man Singh has the ball in hand. This is a surprising move as well because he hasn't been the first change or the first spinner this season. The first used spinner this season. Well, he didn't. I, th I don't think he came on until the 50th or 60th the over 50th in the first over innings, first which, was yeah. which I think to me was ridiculous um, because he's certainly a very effective spinner. But the other thing is, of course, the Harper Eagles are very good at playing spin. And we see the young fellow, Justin Beckford, getting his first chance to keep to some spin as well. Daniel. Brandon Beckford. Daniel Beckford. But Daniel Justin Beckford. is in the squad, yeah. He's the older of the two, by the way, even though he's shorter. <laughs> and it's a couple of minutes, well, 10 minutes to go before lunch. Not a bad ploy, bringing on Mansing just in that 10 minute period before lunch. Yeah. How much do you think the, the, guy, the guy in the Harpy Eagles are looking to get here? Well, <clears throat> after this delivery, I would think they would just uh, they would just judge the state at, at maybe with an hour left to play or a couple a, a couple minutes to left at the end of the day. Because if you think about it, at the end of the day, if they batter up the day, they'll get close to maybe four hundred. You you'll be thinking four twenty, maybe four thirty. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the plan was in terms of Guyana coming back to bat. I don't know if they just want the pitch to, to wear and tear a little more for Pumal and Moti to come into that last day. But if that was the situation, I don't. I'm not sure why Imla came out. He could have given um, Sinclair and Anderson a chance to bat, get some time in the middle. Although uh, both uh, both batters have shown a little bit of form. I think they're just sticking with the plan for now, Guyana. They have all the cards. They have everything. And they have a good bowling sign that can come on and do some damage. Yeah. I think first they're looking to bat a session and a half yeah. to, get, to erase any doubt as to how they can lose this game. Well, that's what I figured as well. And then you give, I figured they would bat out the day and then just give Jamaica awkward half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe a, a 10 or 12 overs to face at the end of the day, maybe 15. Wear them down some more. Uh, yeah. Mm. But you, you just want to give yourself enough time to bowl them yeah. out. But you still have to Edge merge. dropped. That was as simple as they come. Should be taking those at this level. And another drop chance in this match for the Scorpions. My count is seven. And that's a lot. That means you have to be dismissing one player twice, which is 14 times. You'd have to get out these players. Yeah, hard yeah. hands. Bubbled. Absolutely bubbled. And he should have taken that, even on a rebound. Unfortunate for Mansing there. And boy, would the... Scorpions have loved another wicket just before the lunch break. Fuzzy is upset. Absolutely and utterly distraught here. Yeah, it's not it's not it's not a good sign. These are professional cricketers are they're paid to do what they're doing. Yeah. The standards have to be better and it's not I dig out the person who just dropped the chance. And it was a comfortable height. It, would, it, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't too low. They say that Salmon had to get right to the ground. Beautiful again from Duval Green. I think if Jamaica had a team of Duval Greens, they would be, <laughs> they'd be in the money here. Yeah, his heart Fuzzy. is always there. You can see his heart yeah. on his sleeve. It was an easy chance. It was we really all tricky. need a team of Duval Greens. Yeah. A team of Duval Greens. And that's the point I made with Penny. If you have a character like Devil Green, 35, 36 years old, fast bowler, still working in, still steaming in, why are the Scorpions performing at this level? You have the inspiration around you. Well watched by Imlach. 
giving the the bowlers some hope. Admittedly, in terms of their their second captain, because their first captain was uh, Blackwood. It was Blackwood who really didn't perform well. And Brandon King is sort of learning on the job while he has experience learning and, and leading a team and captaining a team in red ball cricket. It's a totally different kettle of fish. Also had a discussion about that as well in terms of the availability going forward of Brandon King to play four day cricket. Because we all know that he's a well travelled yeah. white ball player around the world. Normally in our four day season the players are away. But in this season, based on how it has been arranged, it's only the IPL that is being played now. So what about McKenzie as captain? I mean, McKenzie... It could be a, a, a choice, but I, I just think that you want to limit the responsibility on, on McKenzie at 22 in terms of you want him to be scoring more runs. You don't want him to be burdened by the captaincy but of a maybe struggling he needs, franchise. Maybe he needs that burden. Maybe he needs a burden well, of captaincy. Maybe. The franchise is struggling in terms of winning matches. So yeah. you don't want that additional stress on him. That's a beautiful on drive. That's going to take some stopping. It's not going to be stopped probably not going to be stopped. No, it's not. As quick as King is, that's a top shot from Tevin Imlak. And he's showing that he's in form. Got onto the front foot and eased it down the ground. Yeah, top shot. Midon was wide. Even if he was straighter, I don't think he would have gotten there. But, but going back to that Kurt McKenzie situation, he could be an option. He could be an option. I'm not saying no. But for me, I don't think he has done enough to say that I should be the leader. He has to be scoring more runs. He has to be taking the leadership well, of the batting. I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you there, but it, it's sort of like... Melias was leading the Volcanoes, and as soon as Athanas came back, Athanas resumed the captaincy or assumed the captaincy of the Volcanoes. Despite the fact that Melias was actually doing very well and leading the, uh, the Volcanoes, and it's unfortunate that he's not even part of the squad. I was squad, just about no. to say that. He's no, he's no outside looking in. Yeah, but, he, but if, if the Volcanoes are doing that and they're building on a young fellow, and you say, okay... If West Indies is, is a prime cricket, if you're playing for West Indies and that's, that's, a, that's the highest level you can get, then the West Indies players should be leading, as per Josh De Silva uh, in Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, who hasn't played all that well for them. Craig Bradford, obviously West Indies captain, you're going to lead the Barbados pride. Edge again, but it doesn't carry taking on the thumb of Imlak or of his arm as well and that completes the over four minutes ago before the scheduled lunch break here on day three and it's still the Harpy Eagle show but it didn't take the edge it took his arm forearm that is well at least it was gathered this time and the other thing is, in terms of, of, of putting McKenzie as a captain as well, you're thinking long term. It's not just we want to do well this season. We have to think about what is going to happen next season, what's going to happen in the seasons to come. So what is the nucleus of your side that you know you're going to depend on? So, okay, you, you, you've unearthed some good talent in the form of Pete Salmon, in, in the form of Romy Morris. You know the fast bowlers that you're going to use. You have RBJ Mansing, another consistent performer. And we have seen a change in the field now. Someone who was at slip is now at point. Missed that chance in the previous over. Mackenzie's now at slip. And now he's gone, it seems. No? Is he? And no appeal from the fielders at all. Let's have a look at the replay here. Yeah, just absolutely threw everyone. Well done by Beckford. That's a lazy shot from Anderson, though. He just hung the bat outside the line of the off stump. No intent. That when he gets some intent, he hits that nicely square. Bit of a wide delivery there from Mansing. Scorpion's just looking for something from anywhere. Look at the shot again. Uh, that's a, a reckless poke. He just hung the bat out there. That yeah. was never going to give him any form of runs. I think the ball was like a magnet there. It was just sort of drawing, drawing the bat out. Yeah. 
he just followed that with his hands. Him not being very positive. Based on the time, I think this will be the last over. Three, de three deliveries to come a minute before 12, local time. Steers that one backward of point. Carlos Brown is giving chase. They're going to get two. Definitely played it that time by Anderson. The lead is now 331. That's the most important thing. 60 for 2 is irrelevant at this stage for the Scorpions. It's just that second bar. Cover that one a little bit better. I haven't seen many leg spinners in this regional season here in Jamaica. Not many leg spinners have played here. Man Singh and Zashan Mataro, the only two I can recall. Yeah, it's, a, it's a difficult art at the end of the over, 60 for two. And I think that is lunch. It is indeed as the players trudge off. The guy and a half eagles effectively 331 for two. They hold all the cards. The Scorpions will be glad for a refreshing drink now, but they have a lot to think about over their rice and peas. We'll be back in about 40 minutes.
So it's just about time for the resumption of play on this, the penultimate day of the sixth round clash between the Jamaica Scorpions and the Guyana Harpy Eagles here at Savannah Park. And if you were here with us at 10 a.m. to midday on day one, and for some strange reason, you lost track of what was happening, and you came back, and you see Guyana Harpy Eagles six, 60 for two in their second innings, you might be wondering if the Scorpions made over 500 runs. But that's not the case because from 58 for 5 at lunch on day 1, and Guyana Harpy Eagles made 424. And they rolled over the Scorpions, literally. They just trampled on them, skittled them out for 153. They had a lead of 271. And with that 271 run lead, uh, they opted against enforcing the follow-on. And they batted again and reached lunch at 60 for 2 in their second innings, a lead of 331. Two openers are gone. Raymond Perez and Teja and Chandopol falling to Marquino Minley and Derville Green, respectively. And what the Scorpions are doing and doing so well in the second innings is that they're slowing down the game they're taking time out of the game and the harpy eagles they have to be mindful but they're in such a commanding position that it will not phase them the scorpions have only bowled pace this morning technically only 20.1 overs have been bowled today and they have what 70 another 68 overs or so to go and then if the innings are going to be changed, you're probably going to lose two more. So 67, 66 maximum more to be bowled on the day. And I'm joined by Marlon Pinnock in this session. And Marlon, based on where you see things, how it stands, what is it you think the Guyanese will be looking to do from here? OJ Shields will be restarting, by the way, to Tevin Imlak will get his thoughts after this first delivery of the session. Steer to Javon Buchanan, who is in the gully. Good afternoon to the viewers, wherever you are in the world. I think the guy in the Eagles will be looking to bat just before T Foster. Try to have a crack at the Scorpions this afternoon. And then tomorrow, 90 overs on the fourth day. That's a lot of cricket remaining in this game as well. So, in truth and in fact, the Harpy Eagles in command. And in command from the second session yesterday until day three, the first session as well. It's going to be runs for Imlak, positive running. Only one though. And Andre McCarthy is on the field for. I'm going to tell you who he's on the field for very shortly. I'm not seeing Carlos Brown. Yeah, he's off the field. Well, Carlos Brown is at fine leg and looks like Derval Green is off the field yeah so board for the entire session in the first session today good short delivery from Shields and collected by Daniel Beckford who is a substitute for Romain Morris not sure if he's going to be allowed to bat <laughs> and Morris limped his way off the field yesterday, limped himself back onto the park just to deny the Harpy Eagles the opportunity to bowl out the Scorpions or to get the chance to force them to bat again yesterday. It would have been a big disappointment. Held them up and they came back this morning, lasted only a ball when Mindy was dismissed. Oh, went right through him. A French cut. It was so late on it, Kevin Anderson. But fortunes favor the brave. And the Harpy Eagles have been brave since day one. He was in no position to play that shot. I'm not sure which shot he was trying to play. <laughs> to me, he was looking to tap that ball, but 
got beaten for peace from OJ Shields. And four runs nonetheless. To Anderson, who is up to nine. Very important runs for the RP Eagles as well. Totally in command so far in the six round fixtures. This is straight. Is Joel Wilson interested? No, he's not. I, I would like to see, see where this on the replay faster. Yeah, I'm trying to say that Andis was trying to back away and probably showing some intent that they're going to be positive in this session. But look at it here. I'm not sure what he was doing. I think he was just worried about the pace of Shields. That's missing the stumps, by the way. <laughs> you realize he was in no man's land to play a shot. Good pace being generated by OJ Shields after this long break interval. And the RP Eagles would want at least a 4 4 50 run lead here at Sabina Park. And you look at how they are scoring runs in this game so far, scoring over three runs. We're over at the completion of the 21st, it's 65 for loss of two. You wonder though if Man Singh created a chance earlier, he's going to be continuing. Given that Green is off the field, Um, mainly bowled, what, seven overs in that first spell? I don't think you're going to be seeing him for any extended period of time, given his injury worries and his injury record. He's probably going to have a long rest before he gets a chance to bowl, but he's on the par. That's a great thing for the Scorpions. He's at deep cover. Well, Abijay Mansing is back for his third. And he's running away to celebrate, but that was missing the leg stump, according to umpire Christopher Wright. The Scorpions have not been too happy with Wright, who is a Jamaican. Yeah, that's missing the stumps. That's a good call. Excellent decision by umpire Christopher Wright. Going down the leg. Abhijit Mansing, not a happy fellow, but excellent decision. Yeah. I think the Scorpions... Just desperate for a wicket here, Foster. Still a little bit upset about that Tevin Imla call. Brandon King was remonstrating with him up to the time the players were leaving the field. And even more so when he was batting yesterday. He felt he he suggested that he hit the ball, which he was given like before wicket four. And based on our look, it seemed as if that ball was probably drifting down the leg side as well, but that's part of the game. I was trying to cut that one away. Anderson. Mansing has been more consistent in this spell. Far more consistent. Yes, yeah, so far. Mansing finding his radar in this inning so far. Big sweep. Big slug. Fetch that in the north stand. Kevin Anderson showing his power. And it's probably a sign of how the Guyanese are going to be playing in this session. And that one was wide outside the off stump. Against the spin. But when you connect so sweetly, it doesn't really matter. Definitely over wide long on. Showing great dexterity in this occasion. Kevlin Anderson, and as we mentioned, Foster, he's an aggressive player by nature, and now showing his aggression. Second over after the lunch break. And this is how Kevlin Anderson plays. He won't mess around for too long. And as we see here, the Harpy Eagles looking quick runs. And based on how things is going so far, I think. About a half an hour, hour, hour before T, we'll see a decoration from the RP Eagles.
positive stroke play from Anderson. Went back. Hammered that out to Mindy, who is sweeping on the cover boundary. Anderson has 16. Imlak 17. The partnership is 32. Scorpion started this run in fifth in the table. The yeah, Eagles was at fourth. Almost ran past the ball there, Carlos Brown. But <laughs> did well in the end. And that's the end of the second over after lunch. 73 for two. 22 overs bowl altogether. You can see a positive intent being shown here. After the lunch break, by the Harper Eagles, batters in the middle, in particular, Kevlin Anderson. Spectators there at the Kingston Cricket Club there. OJ Shields will be continuing from the Michael Olin in, and he'll be bowling to Kevlin Anderson. A little bit tentative to to shields. I'm gonna look at his footwork a little bit to see his trigger movement and what he's trying to achieve. He has an open stance, a pretty open stance. One step back. Yeah, he doesn't go back and across. He just goes back and then pushes his foot towards the ball. So he's a candidate for that ball that comes back towards the stumps. Well, in the previous over, you see where he was caught in two minds. This time around, the shot pitch delivery, excellent by OJ Shields. And again, you saw it there. One step back, and then he pushes at the ball. So he could even get into a bad position against a short delivery. And because so much of the weight is coming forward, Kevlan, Halston, Anderson, born the 28th of September 2000, <laughs> 23 years of age. That's going to take some stopping from someone, he won't stop it. That's four, two straight, and the move is on from the Harpy Eagles, and this is classical red ball batting just wait and wait for the ball to come to you and then the runs will flow and that's just as good as they come 77 now for two strain on the line of the leg stump this time which is a shields and terrific timing by kevlan anderson he times this ball fairly well foster No ball signaled, and that means the lead is now 350. Because two more runs will be added. They got a single with the no ball. It's now 79 for two. A 350 lead. Run lead, that is. Impregnable position here for the Harpy Eagles. Healthy lead so far for the Harpy Eagles. They're putting the scorpions to sow the earth to buy in a park. Turned away forward of square. As quick as Carlos Brown is. That's going to be two for Imlak. This is where the game can get out of control for the scorpions. And 21, 21 runs added since lunch and you can see the urge of the RP Eagles batters in the middle after lunch looking to score and looking to score very quickly and so far as I mentioned Foster 21 runs after the lunch break so the 
Just going over six runs after the lunch break. And this is good, aggressive batting display here by the RP Eagles. Current run rate over three and a half. 40 partnership from 74 deliveries. Kevin Himlat, the captain of the RP Eagles, scored a century in the first inning and an unbeaten 101. This is going to be more runs with only one. And that should be the end of the 23rd over at 82 for two. The lead is now 353. And that's another unsuccessful over for OJ Shields, none for 28 from five. And clearly, you could see that the Guyana Harp Eagles came out after lunch with a plan. And so far, they are executing very well. It's going over six runs and over after the lunch break. And this is good signs for the Harpy Eagles, but bad signs for the Scorpions. Manson will be continuing. And this is excellent cricket being played by the Harpy Eagles so far. Looking to rotate the strike. Once a bad ball presents itself, they're quick to capitalize. And it's good to see Derval Green back on the park, Foster. Yeah. He's at mid on. Goes back and hammers that. That's going to be four. Give up the chase. And. The positive intent of Anderson taking a toll on Mansing here after lunch. And remember, he had the edge of Anderson earlier. Put down. And now he's been put to the sword by the compact and powerfully built right hander from, from Guyana. That's a freebie from Abhijay Mansing. Short, begging to be hit. Kevin Anderson did oblige four more runs to his credit and also to the RP Eagles he's going out this is poor this is gonna be out what is Kevin Anderson doing yeah you felt as though he wanted to hit every man seeing delivery out of Savannah Park well I think that was there for the taking but then he's looking to hit the ball over mid wicket region and the ball is spinning away from him poor choice of shot he should be looking to hit that ball over extra cover yeah it was wider and wider and wider from Mansing. had a similar shot earlier in the innings which went over mid wicket or wide long on for six but then that one was a little bit wider than the initial six and no he perishes caught in the slips by Kurt McKenzie and that was after he was dropped in the slip by Pete Salmon. It cost the Scorpions around 15 runs. Well, the new batter is Kevin Sinclair. Close to 450 runs this season, Sinclair. It was masterful in the previous rounds. 160 but it was a different situation in the first innings he was dropped off his very first ball to OJ Shields and ended up costing the Scorpions 23 runs but in the context of the game <laughs> his time spent at the crease Probably allowed Tevin Imlock to be fit enough to be to be back in the fold. <laughs> we saw some attention being given to the substitute wiki keeper Daniel Beckford. I don't think the Scorpions want anything to happen to him. 
given that the regular uh, wicket keeper is off the field. Man Singh is going to be bowling to Sinclair. One thing about leg spinners, they love a new batter. They love when a brand new player comes to the crease. Especially someone who has the mystery of the wrong one. Can always surprise a new batter with that delivery. Well, man single. Got smart. Giving him luck earlier. That one was straighter to Sinclair. Sinclair leading the charge in the batting as well for the guy in the RB Eagles this season. I think he scored a, a big century. I think it was 165. Positive running. Good single, good quick single to Green who is hobbling. If you have an ankle injury, I don't think mid on is a place for you. Honestly. I don't know where is the place for you, but definitely not mid on. Maybe I'd slip. <laughs> Towards the stumps for Imlak, who gets his 22nd run and a successful over for Abhijay Man Singh after being crunched through the onside for a four. Picked up the wicket of Kevin Anderson and it's 89 for three. The Harpy Eagles are 46 run, third wicket stand broken by the leg spinner. And so far in this innings, Abhijay Man Singh has been bowling good areas, consistent areas. And hence why he got his reward of Kev Kevlon Anderson. Outsmarting with a flight of delivery just outside the arse stump. Instead of looking to hit the ball over cover, tends to go to the mid wicket region. Oh, and that's straight. That has to be. No. Not from Joel Wilson's perspective. The Scorpions have hands akimbo. Imlak is on move. He's unfazed. He was wide of a crease. Yeah, that's going down. Excellent decision by umpire Joel Wilson. Out it rolled, so you had the perception that he was going on to the stumps. Well, that's a good decision from the umpire. And he's a level above everybody else in this tournament, Joel Wilson. He's on the international panel. The only West Indian on the elite panel. And that's a good decision. Excellent. He's doing a terrific job so far in the middle as well. All his decision is spot on. That's going to be two, I think. Yeah. And it's now 91 for three. Lead is 362. Realize after the lunch break, the run rate increased significantly faster. Up to 3.74 now. Captain Brandon King still have a slip and a goal in place. in this inning so far none for a 30 into his sixth over very sunny afternoon very humid and wonderful breeze blowing across the ground as well targeting the stumps is shield to shields too straight though Sliding down, he's falling away a bit towards cover and the ball heading down the leg side. 
as to stay upright as long as possible get that ball pitching on midland off and then to get it tailing in if you start it on midland leg it's really not going to affect the batters because it's going to be sliding past the stumps and so far in the second innings on this wicket foster you realize the wicket is keeping low here at spina park so once you vote wicket to wicket your chances are that we can get the batter's clean ball or leg before but you see is just guilty and strain on the line of leg stump nice footwork there from Daniel Beckford skipped away to his left didn't need to dive still CRJ shield strain on the line of the leg stump still want to see him just on that third stump there Versus bowling to a new batter in Kevin Sinclair. He's been dominant in this year's reach. Oh no, this is all slapped away over mid off. Thought he was in trouble for a minute there. He got onto him quicker than he thought. And all ended up playing a tennis shot. Like a forearm smash. And the ball lobbed over cover. But out of the. I think the pace Not close enough to Brandon King to take a, a catch. Yeah. I think the pace of OJ Shield is causing a lot of problems here. But they are biggest batters both in the first and now the second innings. Realize in the first innings OJ Shields got two wickets very early. He was fast and full. completes the 25th at 93 for three. So man sing to continue. This is a game of chess here. It's one team trying to be ultra aggressive, the other one trying to contain while picking up wickets. That's a cut shot. Not piercing the gap though. Feel that you see is that it's forcing the Harpy Eagles batters to score aerially if they're going to get boundaries, especially in front of the wicket. And there you see Sinclair trying to go over mid over mid honor or mid wicket, and got rushed a little bit with the pace of the wicket there didn't time it properly well abj mansing i like the pace and the control so far in this spell and there are two covers there's a short cover almost a straightish middle but it's more of a short cover and then there's brandon Co brandon king at extra cover so it has to, he has to do extremely well to pierce that gap Four that was in this over so far by Mansing. Excellent bowling, made that five. He's he's on a roll here, Javi G. Mansing. And so far, Captain Brandon King is doing a fantastic job in his face placement as well. The backward square leg is out, extra cover and long off. 
Yeah, he was, he was tempted. He was going to go for something big on the onside. Can't cut it off, though. A good effort from Javon Buchanan. But he got the sweep off the bottom of the bat. Just the power of Sinclair carrying that one in front of the Kingston Cricket Club into the boundary for four. Good attempt. But it's four more runs. It's 97 for three, Harpy Eagles. Didn't time to perfection was Kevin Sinclair. But four runs nonetheless to the Harpy Eagles. Winch is closer to 100 for three. They are 97 for three. A overall lead of 368 here at Spina Park. On this glorious afternoon here. Wonderful atmosphere for cricket as well. She is still uh, hunting his first wicket in this innings. Almost beat him for pace. He goes down to Salmon at long, uh, long leg. Has to come around. <laughs> you look at Pete Salmon, a tiring looking Pete Salmon. On the fine leg bungee as well. Just hampering around. This is not good signs for the Scorpion either. Kind of happy Eagles having put in the Scorpions under fire here at Spina Park. Foster is very hot out there, Foster. Yeah. You can see the body language of the Scorpions feelers as well. This is why it was important for the Harpy Eagles to get them in the sun again. But they can't be wasting time while they're in the sun. You have to run them into the ground even more. And based on what you've seen from the RP Eagles, they are running hard between the wickets. And this is a good sign as well. They're not relaxing or trying to make something happen. They are doing what is required of them. And hence why they are leading by three should be three seventy. Yes it is three seventy lead. Still a lot of time remaining in this game as well. It's going to be pushing backward square and fine leg. Imlak is very quick between the wickets. 100 comes up for the Harpy Eagles. 101 for 3. That means the lead is 372. He has to take a breather, Imlak. He's running so hard between the wickets. <laughs> Definitely. I think they're trying to get to 450 as quickly as they can. And as quick as Carlos Brown is on the field, he couldn't prevent the second run either. Steered up to cover. Another run. So the Scorpions are finding it difficult here to prevent singles. The rotation of the strike is going to even frustrate you some more because the bowlers can't really concentrate on an area to a specific bo uh, batter. And this is when the Chopping game. and changing and trying to find their best deliveries to a different player every delivery. And this is when the game gets very excited here. Touch and go. Excellent cricket. Testing the fitness levels of the Scorpions. And some of the Scorpions dismissals yesterday, it's outside of lack of application, it also showed some tiredness as well. I was looking back at about four or five of the dismissals, and the players were playing across the line as if they got tired of what they were served up with. And just decided they had to play big shots. It's a mental battle. It's a, it's a war of attrition. Four-day cricket, five-day cricket is it's tough. 
Even three days are tough. <laughs> if even two days is tough, yeah, just imagine four tough. and five. <laughs> they're tough. And you have to be ready for them physically and mentally. And it's getting to the back end of the tournament. 103 for three after 27 over. And so you realize at Sabina Park, it's very hot. Yeah. Every day, it seems like it's hotter and hotter. Yeah. It gets worse as the tournament progresses. So the sixth game now for the Scorpions. And looking around, Mackenzie, Brown, Salmon, Mansing. And even Morris as well. Morris. They have played all the games so far. And someone is coming off the field. The sense that something was wrong with him. Because he hasn't bowled in the second innings. Normally he has the ball in hand already. He's been replaced by Andre McCarthy. Coming to the end of the season. The Scorpion players really suffering in some injuries, Foster. So, as I mentioned, those five players who would have played all the games Salmon, Mansing, Morris, Mackenzie, Brown. The only players who have played all the games so far for the Scorpions. Salmon is off the field, Morris is off the field. So, only three left standing. He looks as if he has sustained that injury. That goes to King. Fires at the stumps. And, and got home safely. Imlock. So Green has played five of the six games. But he has been off the field for a long time in this game. He didn't play the second game after he was dropped. Shields missed the first game because of an injury. Was recovering. Uh, Abijay Mansing is a fighter. And uh, several other players have missed games throughout because of injuries. Marquina Mindy is making a return. So the deeper the tournament gets, and that's why I'm saying it's a difficult format to play, especially in the Scorpion situation where their batting has been woeful at times. You have to spend a large portion of overs on the field. And it will call your consistency into question and probably that is the reason why Pete someone hasn't been as good as he has been throughout the season he's bought a lot of overs in the air dropped again another one and that's what he shields oh no it's getting from bad to worse for the scorpions in the field my count is now eight in this match the second one of man Singh in this innings has to be taken that that's an easy chance and the scorpions hands akimbo from about 10 of the players except the bowler that's the end of the, the 28th over mansing is not happy he is frustrated he's livid it's 105 for three and Abijay Mansing continues to bowl well. The, bo the batters and the attack. Abijay Mansing still able to restrict them from scoring. And that is good on the part of Abijay Mansing. Not happy with the uh, job catch from Oji Shields. But that just a game of cricket. Still have to fight on. Still have to be a warrior. And so far, Abijay Mansing showing all his warrior skills at the moment. Been outstanding in this inning so far for the Scorpions. With the ball, I should say. Still been able to, to be under five at the moment with the Happy Eagles looking to score quick runs. And still have a wicket to his name as well. Rama Lewis. He's getting ready. Coming to the attack from the Michael Lowland end of the ground. And if you're familiar with Sabina Park, that's a George Edliston end. It's going to be Ramal Lewis. This is where I think it's going to get interesting. Two right-handers with the ball spinning into them. 
something. They're going to be targeting that deep mid wicket and wide long on area. Three men are out on the boundary on the leg side, deep backward square. There is deep mid wicket and there's long on. And then there's deep point on the boundary. There's mid off cover, a slip in Mansing for Imla. Well, there's short mid wicket in King and a square leg, backward off square that is for. And that man is Kirk McKenzie. And there's a cover in Javon Buchanan. It's been changed by Lewis. He wants him a little bit squarer. He was about to do the paddle. Well, the reverse. And he ended <laughs> up paddling. Has so much time on his hands, Imla. As a matter of fact, he have a lot of shots. I think he played one of this shot in the first innings. But now is the time where the Scarpens need to be on their toes. They're just waiting for something now. They're just ambling around and hobbling around, literally and figuratively. Is up to 378 faster. Just 22 runs away from that 400 mark. Part of sweep that's gone fine. It's gonna be one. Excellent Andre work. McCarthy by the substitute sub fielder. Funny enough, Foster you might see Andre McCarthy making his debut in the last round at Savannah Park. You look at the fast bowlers for the Scorpions. Devil Green is injured as well. I think more importantly for the Scorpions is that they're trying to see how they can not be embarrassed in this game. It's one eight for three. Display a lot of overs remain. That's Leighton Leslie, former Jamaica Defense Force captain, as well. Now, the fitness trainer of the females as the females team watch one double 50 over anti 20 title. Hats off to the Jamaican girls for taking the double. Mansing to continue. One wicket so far. Won't get a wicket with that. Control so far from Mansing. 6.2 overs, 1 for 26. Two chances. Missed off his bowling. He's getting some grip off the surface. And that will be music to the ears of Pramal and Moti. And to a lesser extent, Sinclair, who only bowled an over. The off spinner for again in the Scorpions' first innings. Surely will be bowling more in the second. Good cricket. Good solid running. Clear communication. 
and for a respinner abj mansing have good control so far in this contest Guyana Harp Eagles batters haven't been able to score ABJ Mansing freely so far, Foster. Good running. Forced the overthrow. It was a wayward throw from the captain. Beckford had to be diving away to his right. He's not the tallest. Two more runs to the total. It's now 111 for three. 24 run partnership as well. So he eight to the lead. I think a big shot is coming anytime soon. Yeah, it comes now. Yeah. And ask me how I know, I can tell you. <laughs> that was pitched on middle stump and he just swatted it over wide long on. Yeah, his back, his back lift was a different one to the previous deliveries before. You just sensed that he was going to do something different. And he hammered that over wide long on. And that's some of what is going on for the Scorpions for all three days. Not good in the part of the Scorpions. But excellent performance by the RP Eagles so far in the six-round fixtures at Savannah Park. Showing their dominance in regional cricket. Good bunch of players in the RP Eagles setup. And led it by this man, Devin Himblack. Back to back centuries in this year's regional championship. And at the wicket, like in the second innings, not all 33 from 59 deliveries. Playing a captain's game so far. Leading from the front. Both innings. Ramon Lewis. Spin time. And every touch is a run. It's almost like backyard cricket here for the <laughs> for the Guyanese. I used to call it dip and run. I catch you should be. <laughs> In Jamaican parlance, yeah. yeah. Once it touches the bat, you have to run. They're getting a single at will, except that one. That was a brilliant start from Kirk McKenzie, diving away to his right. That's a commitment you'd want to see from the Scorpions. But we've seen it in patches, Foster. Today is 50 days away from the ICC T20 World Cup to be held jointly by the Caribbean and the USA. No so games will be here in Jamaica, and, but there will be in six other territories. Three dots in a row here by Ramon Lewis. across the ground as well so even though it's hot lovely breeze good delivery a rear de delivery that passed about foster I went on with the arm and that completes the over only one run from it. It's 116 for three. Excellent over.
Mansing is continuing. Lap sweep. That's going to take some stopping. It's not going to get to the boundary because Buchanan is covering the grounds. Did well. Sinclair wants three. And I think Imlak saw the intent late and decided against it. Probably rightly so as well because it could have been problematic. Good to see wicketkeeper Daniel Beckford getting some time in the middle as well. Slap that one away. It's going to spin away into the boundary. Looped up outside the off stump. Just luring him into a, a loose drive. He took the bait, Imlak. But he's in such good form that he was able to deal with whatever threat there was on offer from Man Singh. And he gets another boundary. And the lead is now closer to 400. It's 393. It's 122 for three. Tasseling looking shot there. Captain Tevin Imlak. So to 40. Another run. Just look at the Scorpions. They're just waiting for something. They're just waiting for the Guyanese to say, it's your time again. 41 now to the Captain Imlak. I think he can get another 25 or so if they battle this session or even more excellent cricket that's how easy it is for the RP Eagles in the six round fixtures being able to score at regular interval and so far so good for them engine closer to a lead of 400 foster terminating proceedings so far at Sabina Park looped up again wide another run Devin Imlak is up to 42 it's 125 for 3 and it's a lead of 396 at the end of the 30 second over and I think the Scorpions are probably going to bowl another 10 12 overs before they are forced to bat again still want a newish ball come tomorrow should it get to tomorrow that's if it even gets to tomorrow the scorpions batted 61 overs in their first innings but Minley and morris batted about 12 13 yesterday that was the last pair so in total they batted the top order batted around 46 47 overs Harpy Eagles know they have a lot of time on their hands. And with 56 overs remaining in the day's play, that's a lot of overs to be bowled faster. They're playing the cricket the right way, Harpy Eagles. Really have their, their foot on the necks of the Scorpions and their not easing up. Turn that one airily for a, for a second. You felt as if it was going to go to Kurt McKenzie at square leg with Imlock. It's too good. Just too good for the Scorpions. Unbeaten, he's yet to be dismissed in the match. He has over 140 runs. Delicately played. Man Singh is in chase. So to his deep point in Javon Buchanan. They're going to cut it off. They're going to get two. Smart shot from Kevin Sinclair. And this is where experience lies for Kevin Sinclair. Ted touch, you'll call it. And two valuable runs to his credit. And they realize the Harpy Eagles, apart from one shot, out of hunger by Kevin Sinclair. The, uh, after that, they are just accumulating singles at regular intervals. And hence why the lead is 
three nine nine. Hundred and forty four runs in the match for Tevin Imlak. Uh, whoa, that was a, a moment of brilliant from Ramon Lewis. Yeah, deceived Sinclair. Remember, Sinclair was bold with a drifting delivery in the first innings. This one went close to the stumps as if it went through his gate. Was looking to drive that one, yeah, it did, but came off the front pad. It was an appeal for LBW. And umpire Wilson suggesting that it was probably spinning past the storms. So that's a great sign for Verasami Pramal. Should be licking his lips. As well as that man, Kevin Sinclair, as well. Yeah. That is the end of another tidy over from Ramal Lewis. And only three runs from it. It is 128 for three. Two overs from Ramal Lewis so far. None for seven. Been on the economical side of things so far. Terrible Green is being introduced back into the attack from this the north end. The Courtney Walsh end, if you're familiar with Sabina Park, with the guy in Harp Eagles leading by 399. Evening session on the three of the six run fixtures from Sabina Park. More discussions here between Lewis, former youth captain, Derval Green, most experienced player on the team, and Brandon King, the captain, They're trying to find plans. They're trying to find the best ways to slow down the opposition. Well, they've done a great job in slowing down the game. That most I can tell you or that much I can tell you, is that they have not tried to bowl these overs quickly. Strategy employed here by Brandon King. Showing all his experience, Foster. But with all his experience and strategy, there's a lot of time we need remaining in this game. Hundred and forty five more overs remaining in the game. And guided away to deep point. And the lead is now four hundred for the Harpy Eagles. One twenty nine for three in this their second innings. It's looking ever so uphill for the home team slashed away Kevin Sinclair Sh showing his batting capability as well Scored an half century on debut for the West Indies at the test level and came back at the regional level and scored a big century as well. And Kevin Sinclair loves the game of cricket, Foster. This should be the final over before drinks. Um, first hour after lunch. I don't 
think that scorecard is right in terms of the runs. Imlak has 44, now 47. Well, Derval Green has 1 for 25. Into his 11th over. Got the wicket of T.J. Ryan Shandapal. He's got at me down by Ramal Lewis. So at this stand here at Savina Park, Happy Eagles. Have That's an edge, yes it is. Imlak has to go. Derval Green strikes. The water cart will get on the field, but it is of no importance to the Harpy Eagles. What is important is that their captain is off. And he's been dismissed on the cusp of a half century. But that was pitched up by Green. Looking for the full bloody drive. Didn't get close enough. And threw the arms at it. Easy catch for Daniel Beckford. His second one. But it's 130 now for four. A lead of 401 runs. Welcome back to Sabina Park. We get 
on the stroke of Jinx Break by Derval Green is second. Two for 25 so far. And Guyana RP Eagles 130 for four. An overall lead of 401. Butter is wicket keeper. Butter slavery. Yeah, century in the first innings. Kemal Savory, 155. That's his highest first class score. And that was the catalyst for the Harpy Eagles to get 424 from 61 for 6 and showing that he has 100 he gets a single the first round first ball of his second innings now 131 for 4 and yesterday Imla did say that is it's still a very good pitch for batting it's the run rate is close to four runs per over so that tells you that it is that the scorpions just did not put in enough application to apply themselves and survive the tough moments. Some easy wickets were thrown away. Several of the players got bowled playing across the line. Some were hit on the pad trying to play across the line. Scorpions continue to slow down the game. And you can't you can't fault them either. The man from deep backward square has jogged almost 60 meters to come to a fourth slip. Sinclair goes to mid on. There's a chance for a run out. McCarthy fumbles. Sinclair doesn't mind, he gets a single. Green is not too happy. That's his, the end of his 11th over. A successful over. Broken by the drinks break. It was a long over. <laughs> but he got the wicket off him lacking it at 132 for four. And definitely it was a very important wicket. Tevin Imlak batted extremely well in both innings. Very disappointed. You would see him reversing the shot all the way to the dressing room. That's a courage and fight. Of Captain Tevin Imlak had a decent tournament so far. I think he scored two centuries and a back to back as well. and of what we have seen so far in this game on the field he's a great leader as well getting the support of his teammates this is good for the young man to be leading his country in regional cricket that's close kept low you heard the sounds of bowling but it didn't it almost rolled along the ground Remember, Lewis is not going to get the bounce that someone gets. He's off the field, by the way, Pete. Someone hasn't bowled. But he kept very low. He was backing away. A dangerous shot, Kevin Sinclair. Lewis has been very tidy. Into his fourth over, only seven runs conceded. Backs away this time. That had more bounce and was way wider. A misfield from Buchanan. And the urgency and the pressure of the running between the wickets from Savory and Sinclair allowed for that misfield or created that misfield. And two more runs to the Harpy Eagles, 134 for four. I just love how the Harpy Eagles middle order players are dedicated to running between the wickets. Trying to work that one away. Comes off the outer half of the bottle. 
Buchanan this time. Fields on the first attempt. 135-4-4. Leeds stretches further up for the RP Eagles. Really and truly in command from the first day, second session. If you want to see aggregate in football, Scorpions won the first session. The next five session goes to the Guyana RP Eagles. Completes the over at 135 for four, a lead. Uh, that's gone way over 400, just well, 406. I think the RP Eagles will declare a T Foster based on what we have seen so far. They are over 400 lead. a little below on our remaining before T chances are that they won't but after T Derval Green will be continuing Mode across the line. There's no one there. That's four. Uh, the Scorpions have set a field to bowl outside the off stump. They have seven men on the offside. Uh, Kevin Sinclair doesn't give a toss. He goes across <laughs> that and walks it <laughs> in front of mid-wicket for four. Deliberately played by Kevin Sinclair. Showing his class, showing his experience. Acres of space on the onside. And he just came down the wicket. Pick that ball through the onside. If you look at the onside first, so there's a man at, I would say, at the backward square leg boundary and a mid on. So inside there's acres of space on the onside. Scorpions obviously trying the containing method. Goes across again. You probably need someone in mid wicket. If he's going to get a boundary, every ball in that region, that's the second one, back to back. A change has to be made by Green. It runs leaking and it runs at the Scorpions. More and more feel as if they can't make. And the score is now 400 and a lead is now 416. 414, I beg your pardon, it's 143 for four. That's easy pickings for Kevin Sinclair. Bread and butter for him. Acres of space on the onside. And Terrible Green continues to bowl full outside the Austin. We're going to see a change in the field. I don't think anything is wrong with, bo with bowling that line, but once you, it's the plan he's troubled after a couple of deliveries, you have to make a change. And smartly done. I think they want to limit the boundaries and where he's scored off green. So now the man has been pushed back to deep mid wicket, and Shields was at extra cover, is at mid on. Pulled away. That's a tremendous shot. Signal now from Green that he's done for the match. He's asked for a substitute, and probably rightly so, because he was smashed off the front foot by Kevin <laughs> Sinclair. In front of Square, that's a top shot. And the physiotherapist, Barrington Gale, makes his way onto the field. That's a shot of authority. Three in a row from Kevin and Sinclair. And the, the Harpy Eagles, they have declared... They haven't bothered to waste any more time. The, league, the lead is now 418. The Scorpions, they are wounded. And they have been taken out of their misery by the visitors. They have declared their second innings on 147 for four. And I think the Scorpions will have to bat another 50 overs for the day. And it's going to be a long, long haul if they're going to survive this day. 
They barely batted 61 in the first. And they have a small matter of 418. Well, they have a bigger matter of surviving 140 overs in total. But based on what we have seen, can they survive the day? We'll take a break. 419 runs to get when the Scorpions start their second innings.
So 419 runs to win for the Jamaica Scorpions. And you would think that's a far, far way away. Not impossible, but it is seriously improbable given that the Scorpions would be scoring their highest runs of the season. That's one. Two, they'll have to bat the most overs they have batted all season to draw this game, which is 150, well, 139, because there will be 49 overs bowled between now and the end of the day's play, and they have at least 90 to survive on Saturday's final day, if it gets there. But for them to get that 419, I think they will have to bat at least, at least 120 overs. And can they do it? Javon Buchanan and Carlos Brown are going to start for the Scorpions. And Isaiah Thorne is going to be bowling from Mr. Courtney Walsh. And it's going to be Niall Smith with the ball in his hand from that day. Michael holding end. A difference in approach here from the Harpy Eagles. They started with Thorne yesterday. And it brings into question now why the Harpy Eagles batted again. But you saw why they did it. It made sense. And scorpions were falling. They were dropping like nine pins. <laughs> so they have now I'm not even sure if some of some of the players will be able to bat. Pete, someone left the field for a long time at the beginning of the second session today. He had what looked like a, an injury, was laboring on the field. Derville Green, after he was smashed for four, and three consecutive boundaries, suggested that he wanted to some medical attention. Now Smith to Carlos Brown. It's down the leg side. It's going to be a bye to start for the Scorpions. A brand new ball in the hands of Thorne. Beaten down the leg side was Brown. But he left that one alone. But we could keep a saver. Couldn't get across in time. And the first run on the, on the board. So Romain Morris wasn't able to keep in the second innings. That was declared by the Harpy Eagles at 147 for four. Daniel Beckford was the substitute. So it's left to be seen what will be done with the Scorpions batting and who bats where. And I think for these two, it's about survival to T, which is in another half an hour. Well, the debutant Javon Buchanan is on strike. Just a bit wide here to Buchanan. Smith would want to be about that fourth stump area. So you slip and a goal of eating. Buchanan made six in the first innings, Foster. He was out Fox by Isaiah Thorne. The perfect opportunity for Buchanan making his first class debut at his home ground in Savannah Park at the age of 30. 10th of September 1993, date of birth for him. The Scorpions, they were 20 for three in their first innings. Uh, Buchanan fell to Thorne, so too did Carlos Brown, who was caught at short leg. It'll be interesting to see if they employ the same strategy to him when Thorne comes back, well, starts from this, the Courtney Walsh end. <laughs> Top scorer in the innings was Brandon King, 32, Ramal Lewis, 24, and Romain Morris, 21. Pete Salmon made 19, and Mansing 18 in 153. Too way wide. too wide, way too wide by Smith. And if you realize the Harper Eagles, they research the players who they're going to play against Foster. 
and hence why they came out with a plan for Carlos Brown. I would never see Javon Buchanan bat before, but that's why I didn't see a plan for him. But they realized how he got out in the first innings. Was looking good at the wicket, but some deliveries, but as I mentioned, was just out fox by Isaiah Thorne. Getting the ball to swing away. It's Niall Smith from the left hander. He's a wicket taker as well. Tends to get wickets very often by the guy in our Eagles. And that man was Sammy Pramal. 631st last wicket to him to go with 33. Five wickets all. So that's the experience of the man as well. Yeah, this has been a bad start from Nas Smith. A zero control so far. He has wasted the first over. It's not well, one for none. The Jamaica Scorpions. In pursuit of an unlikely four hundred and nineteen to win. Carlos Brown, six first class game, 284 runs at an average of 25.8, strike rate of 41.9. Still will want to step up that average there, Carlos Brown. Getting his full season this season for the Scorpions. Yeah, came close to a century. In the previous round I feel as though he deserves it he's the one player who has shown some level of maturity in terms of how to build an innings tends to get bogged down a bit after getting into the 30s and 40s in terms of how he goes about scoring runs and how he executes his scoring options but one player who has shown a lot of patience, but a lot of deliveries, Carlos Brown. Well, this man, Isaiah Thorne, got his wicket in the first innings as well. At that same short leg region where a man has been placed as well. It's crept on the ground after passing the stumps. It was left alone. And they started yesterday with three slips and a gully. Today, it's two slips and a gully. But there's also a leg goal in Tej Narayan Chanderpaul. And there is a forward short leg in Raymond Perez. Same man who caught Brown with a half-hearted push in the onside. Deflected off the pad and it just popped into the hands of Perez. There's a mid-on in Gudakesh Moti. And there is a mid-off in Verasame Pramal. This man, Isaiah Thorne, 19 years of age, 23rd of September 2004. Played West Indies at the under 19 level as well. Trying to get some more effort into his. His rhythm, it's a smooth run up. We want to see some more energy being used up. It's to generate some more pace. The man from leg gully has gone back to third slip. And immediately the ball goes down the leg side. Isaiah Thorne plays six first class games so far. 24 wickets to his name. Average of 14.8. Economy of the 3.35. This one is clipped towards a wide ish medan. Kodikish Moti is in the way, can't score. So a sedate start so far. 
by the Scorpions. Not been able to score freely here. Two batters in the middle. Haven't got off the mark as yet, Foster. And a huge total ahead of them. 419 the target. As my good friend Miss Kimberly Fav would say, he's going to take a miracle. Yeah, that's down the leg side. Too wide, too straight. And that's by absolutely no chance for Kemal Savory. Oh, by the time he got towards the leg side, it was already past him. That's four more runs added to the total. The Scorpions will take anything they can get. It's five without loss. Isaiah Thorne, guilty. Starting two straight. Getting the ball to swing into the right hander. And that ball swung late as his pass. Carlos Brown. As I mentioned, four buys to the Scorpion total, which is up to five without loss. And no run on the part of any of the batters in the middle so far. It's all extras. Some delays here at Sabina Park, as you can see on the camera. The ball is lost behind the covers, Foster. As Smith. Captain Imlock looking for the ball. Well, it's only eight balls old, so, or 11 deliveries old, so they should be able to get a replacement. Well, as I mentioned, replacement, the third umpire making his way out as well. I've never seen this before. Surprising to me as well. I don't think now Smith saw where it went. Let's see if we can help them. So the ball has been changed here at Spina Park. First time I've seen this happening on a cricket field as well. The ball stays in the park and can't be found. Yeah, the ball went over, well under the covers in front of the George Headley stand. We're looking to see if we can identify where it, where it is. think so yeah that's strange excellent work by the cameraman Kadir Mohammed as well that's strange it's right there I don't know they can't find it but guess what they have found a new ball to replace it Isaiah Thorne has it and he bows a short one to complete the second over at five without loss. Carlos Brown this season gotten starts on numerous occasions, but does not capitalize on getting three figures. I think he made some 87 in one of that game as well. Get a few 40 yards as well. The Scorpion will be hoping he can get the three-figure mark 
in this innings. A debutant Javon Buchanan. At home on his home turf at Sabina Park. We started just a stone throw away from here. He went to school. And then leaving school and started to play for this club here, Kingston Cricket Club. Now Smith is over the wicket. He was round the wicket to start and then he went over. It's going to be runs for Buchanan. Nicely struck. In fact, it's a single excellent field in there by Perez. So Buchanan is off the mark with a single. Scorpions up to six without loss in pursuit of 419 for victory. Uphill task here at Sabina Park if the Scorpions are to cross this line. Foster, that's the highest run chase that they will have to chase for the entire season. So far this season, just going over the, that 300 mark, I think it was one time Foster. Should be two. Another leg by to the. In fact, it's a run to. No, it's a leg by. Yes, it's a leg by to the total. Still means that Carlos Brown is yet to get off the mark. Just about 16 minutes before the tea break interval, and the Scorpions will be open that they don't lose a wicket just before tea on day three of this West Indies Regional Championship. I realize so far, Smith getting the ball to swing away from the left-hander Buchanan and I definitely think he's just trying to set up Buchanan at the moment anytime soon we'll see the Docker Foster he definitely can jack back the ball off the seam is Smith very capable of that. Based on how he's bowling so far, I think he's wasting the new ball as well. Javon Buchanan happy. Leave these deliveries outside the house. I'm not threatening the stump and swinging further away. Round the wicket to close out this third over. And it's still the same result. Well, it's a no ball. It's way too wide from Nile Smith. I wouldn't be surprised if he's replaced shortly. He's off radar badly. He's just not getting his angles right. And you can see that he's getting some outward movement, but it's starting way too wide to tempt someone who is trying to survive has to get the 
batters playing at the deliveries force them to trust their defenses at the moment it's just way too easy it's just raise the bat and allow the ball to go through to Kemal Savory you realize Niall Smith doing some back stretching as well you could see him holding his back the delivery the fifth delivery of the over I wonder if he's okay for the continue for the kind of happy Eagles Driven, sweet, a left-hander's dream, square drive, overpitched by Smith, he has been woeful to start so far, and Javon Buchanan won't mind, and that's a boundary to his name, and brings the Scorpions score into double figures, they're 12 without loss, he's up to 5. Tremendous timing there by Javon Buchanan. Just came on the front foot and just caressed that ball through the point region. First boundary of the innings to Buchanan. And what a way to get going at Sabina Park on debut. Second innings, well played to the man, Javon Buchanan. That should do is confident a whole lot faster Thorne is ready again that one kept a little bit low watched all the way by Carlos Brown he's not off the mark as yet Carlos Brown made a, a blistering double century last weekend against St. Anne in that quarterfinals game in the Cena Cup here at Jamaica. Led his team to a win over St. Anne. So he's in tremendous form, is Carlos Brown. You're going to see spin very shortly. Clipped away. That's going to be four as well, I think. Am I right? Yes, I am. And that's bread and butter for Carlos Brown into his pads. Yeah. Played this one a little bit more fluently than he did in the first innings. And got it all along the ground. He takes the score now up to 16. That's his first scoring shot. The Scorpions, 403 runs away. Straight on the line of the leg stump was Isaiah Thorne. And terrific timing here by Carlos Brown. Not a way to open his account here at Sabina Park in the second innings. As I mentioned, Brown, this season for the Scorpions in sublime form. Just need to get over that three-figure line. He's shown great potential in the middle. Thorns radar, similar to Smith has been off color, off line. I said that I just believe that the Harpy Eagles will be interested in getting some spinners on shortly. Well, with 10 minutes before T, I think that is the strategy that the Harpy Eagles should implement faster. Getting as much over before the tea break interval. Kennan is going to be facing Thorne. Got him in the first innings. I'm going to look at the, the setup of Buchanan. A little open stance, not a wide one like uh, Kevin Anderson. A trigger movement, a slight movement towards the ball. And can see why he has that issue of 
a, a candidate for the LBW. He covers all three stones on the point of delivery. Thorne is ready this time. That's flashing. And beaten outside the half stump. Even use that ball as an example. Wants to get close to covering his half stump. He's there, but it's almost as if he ends up outside the line of the half stump. So it's an exaggerated movement because he's worried about the, the threat of his off stump being a problem. So that is, is a little technical issue that he might have to, well, he has to work on. So yeah. when the ball comes back in like that one, I'm going to show you now, He's in a tangle as he, in terms of him playing straight or he has to play around the ball and look at him falling over. He's way outside the line of the off stump. So the back leg has no base and he's coming around with his legs. So he's basically, as my old coach would say, he's changing his foot, which means his back foot finishes ahead of his front foot. And that tells you he doesn't have a stable base. So that is something that he has to correct. And given that he was dismissed leg before wicket, and teams will be looking at these footage and say this is an area that we can target Buchanan. This is his second innings and as I said, I expected spin at some point. And I just thought that Nile Smith was wasting the ball. Good move. Excellent. And that is a proactive move by the captain. And so Buchanan has to go back and do some more work. But this is the way he is. He's 30 now, and if this is the way he's scoring his runs to get to this level, I don't think you can really do a lot to change it. But we see people at international cricket level or international level change different technical approaches when they're um, going through bad patches or they have been found out by a team. I was speaking to someone in relation to high performance and data analysis in, in cricket now. They said that when the West Indies played against Australia, if I get a chance to talk about it some more, if Kevin Sinclair doesn't breeze through the, the over, um, goes pretty quickly. And they're saying that Steve Smith at the start of the, the test series against the, the West Indies, the West Indies plan was to nick him off outside the off stump. They did so in the first innings because they realized that he, his trigger movement takes him way outside the line of the off stump and he was worried. He was getting... This is turned away down to backward square. He was getting caught on the move whenever the ball was seeming away. So they used that tactic and got him out in the first innings. The second innings... He changed his approach, Smith, and he stopped that movement towards the off stump and just stood still. Ended up being 90 or not out. That was the second the second innings of the the second test. And of course we all know what happened there. Not out, but the Australians still lost. But simple adjustment to your game. Sinclair, I find is someone who bowls into the, into the wicket. Came through the ranks as a specialist white ball bowler. Was used a lot in the power play overs. Too short. That's going to be runs for Buchanan. Very Sammy Pramol can't stop it. He must be itching to get the ball in his hand. Well, in fact, he's just got it in his hands. <laughs> 19 without loss, the Scorpions in pursuit. A 4 19 for victory. This is the third day of the six round fixtures at Savannah Park. 
It's going to be an examination of spin here. A steady and heavy diet. And that completes the fifth over at 19 without loss. So if you look at the scorecard, two Centurion for the guy in the RB Eagles in the first innings. Really took the game away from the Scorpions. And you look at the Scorpions in the first innings. The top scorer was Captain Brandon King. I think he got 32. A couple of batters got in the 20s. And in the end, the RP Higgers lead first innings by 271 runs. And batted a second time. And Massa lead 418 in quick time. Means the Scorpion in their second innings would need 419. And so for the Scorpions, this must 19 without loss. The Debiton, the Javon Buchanan, not out six, and Carlos Brown on five. He drops his hands. But first, if you realize that last delivery, not a lot of bounce coming out of the wicket as well. He dropped his hands, but look how close the ball passed. Shows that there's a lack of bounce and peace in the wicket as well. Yeah. Batting off middle and leg stumps, Javon Buchanan. So, on the see, just for my purpose to see if it's actually his back foot that ends up yeah almost three outside inches off. outside of stump with that trigger movement so once the ball come back into him it's gonna cause a problem yeah because it's his butt now is coming from it's coming across his body instead of coming from straight down the line so it's always gonna be has to be very 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 careful when he plays the ball that comes back into him because once he misses there's a strong potential that he's going to be a lbw candidate and you realize the front foot is plant down the wicket so once the ball is full he tends to play across yeah because he's technically on the move when the ball is coming towards him so the back foot goes outside the line and then the front foot comes straight at you so he's also a problem if the ball gets short towards him as well because the weight is coming forward towards you and there's a drive that's sweet play that one straight that's how you want your opener to play for sure straight down the ground and it looked as if it was angled in towards the stumps yet it was well it's not where he, inten he intended for it to go but he got it all along the ground and there it goes again because He's overcompensating to the offside. Once it gets close to middle and leg stumps, he's going to be looking to whip that ball through the onside. And I think it's a movement, a late swing from Thorne. Yeah, it was. But the good thing about it, it was a full face of the bat being presented by Javon Buchanan. His second bungee as well. Nicely bowled. And this is the issue now, given that he's outside the line of the off stump, as an opener, once the ball is in and around that area, you're supposed to be okay with leaving anything that is outside where your trigger movement takes you. So he shouldn't be forced into a drive there. He should be shouldering arms, unless he's confident enough that that ball is so full that he's not going to move away. With the final two deliveries before the tea break interval as well. Yeah. Should be leaving alone. You want your top order players to be leaving alone deliveries outside the off stump, especially with a new ball. Well, I don't think he has any option there but to leave alone. And that <laughs> will be T and the Scorpions 23 without loss in pursuit of 419. Improbable. And they have survived six overs. 
when they were 23 in the first innings they had already they had already lost three wickets so it's a massive upgrade and javon buchanan has uh 10. carlos brown has five a numerous amount of buys and leg buys so far but it's just part one of a long long trip for the scorpions if they are to get any points out of this game so 396 more runs to, to get and we'll see you in about 18 minutes time given that the harpy eagles declared their second innings at 147 for four yeah and set the scorpions this imposing total so join you again here at savannah park shortly
So welcome back to Savannah Park for this the final session of the penultimate day. It's gonna be Kevin Sinclair to bowl the first over after T. It's 23 without loss, the Jamaica Scorpions. In search of 419 runs to win this game outright. They have another 133 overs to survive if they are to draw the encounter. I don't know which one you choose. Surface has shown that runs is in it. 424 made by the Harpy Eagles in their first innings. And then they declared on, four, on 147 for four. Scorpions had a tame first innings response of 153. And 153 in four day cricket is always going to put you on the back foot. Sinclair. Ooh, it's now into his what? His third over of the match. Bowled only one last evening. The penultimate over. And he's now bowling his second. I think they look at him as the one who will cause some threat early up for these two openers. Marlon Pinnock is here. Mm. You ask him what he thinks the Scorpions need to do and for at least the first hour, hour and a half. They have to survive 40, 43 more overs before the close of play. Well, it's a big axe of the Scorpions. Spun down the leg side, didn't try to play. Luckily, he didn't. Excellent. Took, took that ball that spun past the wicket keeper. Savory sharp turn, and Sinclair is bowling pretty quickly, so it's not going to be easy for you to get towards him. And remember, the ball is new as well, it's, it's going to get drift as well. Yeah. Part of the reason why Carlos Brown is staying back is because he trusts the wicket. Oh, that one was quick off the inner half of the bat. The one time he was drawn forward. And a little bit of a shout of catch him. So only one run to start after T. It's 24 without loss. Good start after T by Kevin Sinclair. Normal wicket take as well. Very attacking. The Scorpion have the three spinners in the Kayana RP Eagles to cope with on this third and fourth day wicket at Spina Park. Won't be easy. 395 runs to get. But the most important thing, the Scorpions have 10 second innings wicket in hand. So Niall Smith will be coming from this the north end. So coming to box end of the ground. And we'll be rolling to Carlos Brown. Carlos Brown in this team for the Scorpions. The only player this season, apart from Chadwick Walton, to really and truly look the part in the middle. The Scorpions will desperate and desperate in need for him to get three figures. Well, Romain Morris is the leading scorer this season, so you have to put him in there as well. Yeah, but when you look at uh, Romain Morris, he's injured at the moment. Yeah, but I mean, when you said that the only other player, meaning he oh. has done well throughout the season. Yeah. You know, Brown, he has to stand up and bat for a long, long time if, if the Scorpions are going to stay anywhere close or even have any chance of surviving and that is pre predicated on what happens with the Guyana Harpy Eagles with bat with the ball in hand because their trump card or trump cards are Gudakesh Moti and Virasami from all I think how the Scorpions deal with those two really and truly will decide the outcome of the game A 
Oh, that's with. It said, hit me, please. And that's what Carlos Brown did. It stood up in the wicket. Now Smith is struggling today. He got the wicket off the first ball of the morning to wrap up the first innings. But this second innings has been painful for the pacer. He has been wasting the new ball. And Carlos Brown cashed in. Short, wide, stood up. Stand and deliver shot from Carlos Brown. Bread and butter for him. Scores up to 28 without loss. The Scorpion in pursuit for 19 for victory. Hopil task for the Scorpions. A partnership. R2, RU3 partnership. Big partnership. It will be possible. Cricket is a glorious game, Foster. Glorious game of uncertainty. At one stage, on the first day, the Hyper Eagles were 61 for 6 and man managed to get over 424 runs. So once you apply yourself on the Sabina Park wicket as a batter, runs is there for you. Not saying that is put down on you to pick it up. You have to apply yourself as well. And it is what the Arbor Eagles batters did extremely well. Late on that one. Good feeling. Good feeling, Raymond Perez. And there was a chance for a run. I think Brown was late on that one. He came back in with the angle from Smith. Has to give his captain something to savor because he hasn't really shown that he deserves to get another spell in this match or this innings based on what he has done. He has changed ends. He's now operating from the Courtney Walsh end. And it goes back to show the belief of the team for Nyla Smith. Yeah, that's going to be more runs. No carry through to the wicket keeper, Savory, who is not enjoying this. It's going to go against his name. He had absolutely no chance. Down the leg side, and it basically rolled. Before it got to him, a ball was lost in that area earlier. Let's hope if they can, hope that they can find it. But <laughs> this one, they did. <laughs> and it's going to be runs for the Scorpions, a 32-run opening partnership. But a lot of it has been buys. 12 of them. Two batters in the middle on 10 apiece. Very humid here at Sabina Park. No ball, but Brown missed out there. That was a full delivery. A half volley in my estimation. Just needed to gap that one. He timed it sweetly, but just couldn't pierce the gap. Yeah, he was onto it early. Foundation and Chanderpaul. But if you just joining us and watching the TV and see none for 11, you'll think Nihala Smith is bowling extremely well. <laughs> but he bowled that one well, or good enough. To he has been erratic to say the least. It's 33 without loss, and that is the second over after T. Scorpions. But it's in the middle, but in time so far, Foster. I haven't been bothered. See a domino tournament going on just beside the scoreboard here at Sabina Park. <laughs> You're not watching the cricket, Foster. You're more focusing on the domino. Be 
big part of Caribbean culture is Domino. And Domino is also a big part of Guyanese culture. Well, Kevin Sinclair is getting ready to bowl to Javon Buchanan. Looks good in the middle so far is Javon Bo Buchanan. On DB as well. For the cut there, misses out. They realize Buchanan backing away to cut. They want to go across to cut the ball. They don't want to back away. With the ball sliding on. Not a good, good delivery. Excellent delivery. Pitch and spun away from the left handed Javon Buchanan. Excellent from Sinclair. Yeah, drawing him forward. One spun at pace. He's going to get one here, surely. Good running. Good cricket as well. Good call. Good clear communication. And around the, the region now. Trinidad batted again and declared at 95 for two. <laughs> After bowling out combined campuses and colleges for 238 in their first innings response to 591 for seven declared. CCC, they are one without loss. That's an edge, yes it is. Carlos Brown has to go. He is not sure, he's unmoved really. But Kemal Savory was sure and threw away the ball immediately. His bat was away from his pad. Well, the first slip was very confident. Yeah, Carlos Brown hangs his head. Not sure of the reason, but he has to depart. He's 34 for one. That's a little bit of a loose shot. I want to see Look, much. That's a big loose shot there from Carlos Brown. Looking at it again to see close to the wicket was Sinclair. There was no bat on pad. And if there was a sound... Let's look at it one more time. Uh, not sure. I am not sure if he hit the ball, he hit the pad first before he got close to the bat, to the ball. I beg your pardon. Yeah, I don't think so. Pretty close though. Yeah, if if there was a sound, it could not be anything else but bat on ball. Yeah, so Kurt McKenzie. I can't tell if it's a good decision or not, but the umpire says he's out because you can't visibly see a deflection. It, was, it must have been a tiny edge. But the wicket keeper went up straight away. And just look at the reaction around the bat. Leg slip was him. Luck. He clearly heard something, Foster. Uh, the, the man at short leg wasn't really too optimistic. But I think the most important thing is that umpire Joel Wilson thought there was an edge. And Kurt McKenzie is at the crease now at 34 for one. So I was giving you the scores around the region. Uh, the CCC, they need 449 to win. They are one without loss against the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. Barbados, they have enforced the follow-on against the Leeward Islands Hurricanes after making 542 for nine declared. Barbados Pride dismissed the Hurricanes for 288. Hurricanes are 31 without loss. They trail by 223 in their second innings. Oh, that was fully forward from Mackenzie to Sinclair. And the other game, the, the Windwood Islands Volcanoes, they're on course to beat the West Indies Academy. And Mackenzie pushes that to mid on to complete a successful over for Kevin Sinclair. One for four. The Scorpions 34 for one in pursuit of 419. The Academy 112 for seven. They need another 168, which makes it 280 runs to win overall against the Volcanoes. And the men at the crease, Teddy Bishop 47 and Naeem Young on 8. And it would be a very brave man to bet against the Volcanoes not winning from here. Two wickets apiece for 
Springer, Tyson, and John. And Cyrus, the leg spinner from Winwards, who didn't play here, has the other wicket to fall so far. So those are the updates from around the region where Barbados in control, Trinidad in control, and the Volcanoes on the verge of wrapping up today's, well, wrapping up their encounter on today's third day. And here at Sabina Park, Scorpions chasing 419 or 34 for one. I'm not sure if they're trying to chase or they're trying to defend, but they're batting as normal as they can. Three slips on a gully. Waiting for now Smith against Javon Buchanan. No ball. Drove that one pleasantly. I think this is a more comfortable uh, operation for Javon Buchanan with the ball coming across him. Because of that exaggerated movement to get to the off stump, he can judge better when the ball is pitching to go across him, to leave alone. I'm not sure how many deliveries Nell Smith will get to come back towards that, that stump, to swing back towards the stump. Let's see if he can. Haven't seen many so far in this contest. That was a no ball. Takes the score to 35 without, for one. Sorry. But he has been all over the place so far, Smith. Oh, that's a beauty. Good delivery. And now Smith. Not at his best so far. As you see, Kirk McKenzie. Kirk, Sanjay, Alexander. McKenzie. Born the 9th of November 2000, age of 23, was the first player from the Bryce Academy to represent the West Indies at the test level. Played CPL back in 2021 for the Tallowers as well. Played 21st class game for the Jamaica, scoring 1,123 runs at an average of. Another no ball there from Smith, second one of the over. At an average of 31.2. Just not living up to expectation is Kurt McKenzie. Very talented young batter as well. Just 22 years of age. Oh, that's a beauty. It went right across Buchanan, but it turned him square. Touched down on and about middle and leg and went across him with the angle. And luckily for Buchanan, it didn't take the edge. But he had no idea how to play that one. He did the best thing in not hitting it. <laughs> exactly so. This man, Kurt McKenzie. Played three testers for the West Indies. Scored a half century against Australia in that test series. will never be out in the history of cricket that was pitched outside the leg stump and of course in that test series he looked unbothered in that test series some get some soft dismissals though but that's the way Kurt McKenzie plays all oh, he looks good at the wicket and then finds a way how to got out Please, for this club here in Jamaica as well, Kingston Cricket Club. Another no ball. This is poor from Smith. He has to, he has to get it right. He's a much better bowler than this. Yeah, he's struggling to get his run up right, and he's shuffling to get to the crease, which obviously tells you that he's in no rhythm at all. It's not coming out properly for him. It's not happening how he wants it to. He's not going to come round the wicket. Let's 
see if anything changes for him. Bowled a couple of beauties so far in the over, but it has been mixed with three no balls, which, which can give the batter some comfort that he's all over the place. And there it is, a full toss missed out there, Buchanan. Should have got that one. Wonder if Nile nah, Smith is trying too hard here. It's up and down this afternoon. See some weird delivery. No balls. Full toss. It's all over the shop. Yeah. This is not good for him and for the guy in our Eagles. I think the good thing for him is that they have almost 450 runs to play with so he can get away with what he's doing now but it's not good enough and it goes wider and wider of the stumps dropped or did it not well it dropped in front of him it seems that the, that was second slip and Smith around the wicket angled towards the stumps yeah bounced in front so definitely not like the Scorpions that one was not put down by the Harpy Eagles but four more runs to Buchanan he will take it 15 and it's 41 for one that was a good delivery this time, Foster, from Niall Smith. He's getting the edge of Buchanan's bat. And good for Buchanan. Didn't get to that feeler and slip. Just dropping short. But four more runs to his credit. He's up to 15. And the Scorpions up to 41 for one. In their second innings in pursuit. Of 419 for victory. This is a good matchup between Kurt McKenzie and Kevin Sinclair. And this, this feel I like. Kurt McKenzie tends to drive the ball aerial in that cover region. And Kevin Sinclair tends the ball a bit quicker through the year as well. This is a test here for young Kurt McKenzie. In the first innings, Hali Mohammed got the wicket of Kurt McKenzie, was caught. I think he was caught behind. Reaching for a delivery outside the off stump. But so far, Kurt McKenzie. Four deliveries. Looks very solid, Foster. This is how we play. Always look busy. Always look solid. And then find a way to throw away his wicket. But this time around, the Scorpion will be hoping that he bat throughout the day. Come back tomorrow. Oh, that's a beauty. What a delivery. Reaching forward was Mackenzie. Touchdown on about middle and off. And it spun sharply past the bat and the off stump. And well taken by the wiki keeper who was riding the bounce there. They realized yeah, the ball before wasn't that too full. Kurt McKenzie was reaching for that delivery and hence why he spun away past the bat.
Kiana nu. Olga Fiesen op. Naar Smith. The last delivery. In his last over. Got the edge of Kiana's bat. Just dropping short off the second slip feeler. Now you see an extra feeler going behind the bat. Seem to be going to a third slip. That Steve Narayan shunned the ball. So excellent move by Captain Tevin Imlock. Look at wickets is the RP Eagles. He's round the wicket again, is Smith. Short delivery. So Imlock at first slip, Kevin Anderson at second slip, Tage Narayan Chandapal at third slip, and Kevin Sinclair is in the gully. And Ronaldo Ali Mohammed is at backward point. Cover is Raymond Perez, Budakesh Moti, Midoff. Where Sami Pramal is at mid on. And Isaiah Thorne. Well, he's having some struggles in the sun at long leg. <laughs> Beating down on his forehead. Looking straight in the sun as well. Yeah. Tough old game this. Well left. And that is what you'd want to see from Buchanan. Given that he has that movement outside the line of the off stump. Covering the stumps. So he should know whether or not the ball is coming towards his stumps. Elected to leave alone just now. Buchanan of great temperament as well. Tends to bat long in all format of the game. At the regional level, getting an opportunity and would want to make a mark for himself is Buchanan. Testing line, testing length outside the off stump by Niall Smith. And Buchanan, 37 deliveries so far in the second innings. Look unbothered so far. Looking to make a name for himself in regional cricket. And one of the happiest moments is to see your wife coming to support you at Spina Park playing the first regional game. That must be a plus for him as well. That should be encouraging as well. Oh, hits him on the pad, but that's sliding down. They can eat. Oh, this could be a mix up now. And they almost greeted each other mid pitch and shook hands, and then they turned the other way, went back to their respective ends. That was going down the leg side. He should be trying to play that ball towards mid on. But because he's falling over to the offside, it's difficult for him to play that on drive. The bat is coming from an angle for Buchanan, as you have been saying. So this, as you saw, is obviously a plan from the Guyanese. Drag him across, drag him across, similar to the first innings, and then get that ball that is, is threatening towards the stumps into play. That one just started a little bit too straight. So it wasn't a real threat in the end. Driven. And fielded by Perez. And if you look at the field that is set here for Buchanan, there's just two men on the onside. So any delivery that is on Midland leg stump, they are forcing Buchanan to play across the line of the delivery. And I think this is a excellent plan here by the Guyana RB Eagles. And they realize Buchanan tends to fall over when the ball is on middle and leg stump playing around his pad and that can be very very detrimental for young Javon Buchanan turned away he obviously likes it there and he gets a run that ball was into his legs turned it away brings Easily. up the 16th run to complete the 12th over at 42 4-1 
made that shot look very easy was Buchanan on the line of the link so allowing the ball to come to him and at the last minute just use the wrist and get that ball out to the man at the deep packet square boundary it's a beautiful shot Of the sea at Old Arbor. I have a view. Wonderful building as well. Wonderful country it is in Jamaica. Behind the beach is the Palisades Highway. If you're going to the Norman Manley International Airport, that's the way to go. Kevin Sinclair is going to continue. He's going to be bowling to Javon Buchanan. Solid. Spending time at the wicket so far is Buchanan. 40 deliveries. Beat that 41 deliveries so far. Turn them square there. Has to be careful here, Buchanan, that he's not trying to turn the on, turn the off spinner through the onside, because that could become problematic for him. And that's where leading edge can come into play as well. Sinclair has to carry that ball up a little bit more. He's bowling a little bit too short. You obviously see what the plan is: bowling quick into the wicket to get the ball to spin sharply. He has to draw Buchanan forward. It's too easy to be on the back foot. Every player loves to be on the back foot. As if nothing is doing when he's on the back foot, Foster. Oh, turned him around. Probably should have been forward to that one. It was full up. Has to be careful. But I made Nova completed at 42 for one. Yeah, I think that ball was on the line of the leg stump. I think Buchanan should be on the front foot instead of playing back. They don't want to get trapped leg before. And Buchanan will want to make a mark here at home, Savina Park. Yeah, Good to see him spending some time at the wicket though, Foster. Yeah, just to update. There has been an outright win. There's been an outright win in the, the contest between the Volcanoes and the Academy team. No surprises as to who won that game. The Volcanoes wrapped up the contest a short while ago by 158 runs. Kurt McKenzie dropping his hands. They bowled out the academy team for 121. They were chasing 280 for victory. And pick off the bowlers. Shamar Springer, 4 for 30. Three other bowlers had two wickets apiece. And the best scorer was 47, Teddy Bishop, for the academy team who batted only 34 overs. Oh, that's another good delivery. So he has mixed up. It's really a mixed bag so far from Smith. A couple of poor deliveries and a couple of good ones, some even great. But it's just been all over the place. It's been inconsistent. So as a batter, sometimes that can throw you off your game as well. You're not ex you don't know what to expect from this bowler. Serves up a beauty, then he serves up a half tracker or something that's flying away down the leg side. You have to be 
very alert and very assertive at the wicket. Down the leg side now, so from that good delivery to something that is off the radar. Honestly, thinking he's trying a bit too hard here is Nala Smith. He just won to get among the wickets for the guy and guy in RP Eagles. Well, he got one in the first innings, the last wicket of Marquino Millie this morning. Not at his A game. So far in these six round fixtures here at Sabina Park. Yeah, Mackenzie watched that one all the way. Covered his stumps, didn't need to play. And that win for the Volcanoes is a very important win, by the way. They were second in the, t in the table coming into this round. They play the Leeward Islands Hurricanes next to close out the season. They could possibly beat the Hurricanes to win the title. Top but of the table clash. Well, <laughs> the game against the Pride is not done as yet, but the, the Hurricanes started the day at the top, so I don't know how many points the, the Pride will rack up after this game. They obviously had over 500 runs. They had five batting points minimum in that game. And they've already bowled out the, the uh, Hurricanes team. But how many points or how many fast bowling points did they accumulate and all of that. So those will have to be checked and diced and all of that. It's going to be a very close end to the season. That is what I'm sure about. The Scorpions are definitely out of it in terms of winning unless something miraculously happens. And that completes the over. And the Harpy Eagles will have something to say about it. They won the, the title on the very last day last season. And there you go. So the Volcanoes, they were trailing by 11 or 10.6 4 yeah so they they picked up 12 points for winning so that brings them to 83.6 and then you're going to have the fast bowling points coming in i can't do the calculations no but based on where the game is not based on winning they're they're now back at the top of the table for sure they have 83.6 points to be back at the top of the table for now the other points will come in in terms of the batting points and the bowling points etc And a quick single, a chance for a run out. It was an hesitation at the at the start. It was a, hes a hesitation, but they got through the two Kingston CC players. Wide of the crease there was Sinclair. Pramal took some time to get to it. He had a good, a favorable bounce, but he just didn't get onto the ball quick enough to prevent any run. Not one of the quickest feelers in the guy. Our biggest team is from all, hence why Butters in the middle got through for any single in the end. Still feel as though this is a very solid wicket to bat on. It's not giving the feeling that there are many devils in the wicket. It's a natural third day where a couple of deliveries will spin, but they are literally no demons in it. Mackenzie still trying to get that first run. 15 balls, unlike him. He will get it now and he'll probably get two. Hit it to the right of Isaiah Thorne. No, one. Good fielding. One-handed pickup. 
big fast bowler doing a fantastic job coming off the long off boundary to prevent any chance of a second run there that's somewhat the performance of the RP Eagles so far in the game outstanding Sabina Park wicket is easy to button. You realize the Harpy Eagles recovered from 61 to 6. The mass 4 2 4. Good defensive work there from Javon Buchanan. And he's faced what 48 deliveries now, or 49 to complete the 15th over at 44 for 1. Spending crucial time at the wicket. Here's Javon Buchanan, and why not on debut? Change of bowling from this or commentary box and Ali Mohammed is the new bowler. Replace Niall Smith. Yeah, he bowled all his overs yesterday from the George Headley stand end. Got the wicket off Kurt McKenzie. Moved the ball both ways. And, and he's now gonna be bowling from this the Courtney Walsh end. And it's a spin and pace combination for the Harpy Eagles since T. This is what he does so well. He goes very wide off the crease and then has the ball going towards the slip region and then comes from the same angle and it goes with that angle which is going towards the stumps. And it proves to be a challenge for the left-handers especially. Very skillful bowler is Ronaldo. Very skillful indeed. And I showed that in the first innings as well. Lindis occasion, strain on the leg stump. Excellent take by the wicketkeeper. keeper. Both seven overs on the trot yesterday. Just a slip and a goal in place for him, though. Foster is very humid here at Sabina Park. You can feel the heat in our commentary box as well. Realize Kurt McKenzie. Very tentative to get on the front foot to Ronaldo Halle Mohamed. Think the way how he got Kurt McKenzie out in the first innings will be playing on McKenzie's head at the moment. He realized in this occasion, just reaching for the ball was Kurt McKenzie playing away from his body. Had that ball shape away, chances are that what ball could have hit the head and went to a slip or even a gully. So McKenzie need to be mindful of that Foster.
Kurt McKenzie solid behind that one to complete the 16th over at 44 for one. A made no over to start here by Ronaldo. Bang on target picked up from where he left off yesterday. And this is good signs for the RP Eagles. Kevin Sinclair will be continuing. Some wickets is Kevin Sinclair. Didn't bowl much over in the first innings. It was the left arm twin spinners who did the damage for the RB Eagles. The veteran mode. The veteran picked up five wickets. And Moti picked up a wicket. Those two. Bowlers bowl majority of the overs for the RB Eagles. Sinclair, six overs, one for six. It's not giving away anything. Picked up the wicket of Carlos Brown. Takes the outer half of the bat. They're going to get one. Very economical so far is Kevin Sinclair. Asking questions. Japan Buchanan buckling his way out here at Sabina Park. Goes down the leg side. Fired in by Mackenzie by Sinclair to Mackenzie. I think this should be the final over before yet another jinx break here at Spina Park. But it's good to see the fight from David and Javon Buchanan. Really putting up wonderful fight here and this is what the scorpions was lacking in the early part of the season another that over completed and it's drinks 45 for one the scorpions they require another 374 to get to 419 and the Harpy Eagles, they need nine wickets. But Cannon, Javon, that is, has 18. Carlos Brown went for 10. Kurt McKenzie, he has one. And we'll take a break and be back shortly with more.
So, another hour and a half to go before the end of today's play. The Harpy Eagles still in control. Javon Buchanan, 18 from 51, is facing Ronaldo Ali Mohammed. And the Scorpions looking at a mountain of stars of 419 runs. I don't think they get there. But they have 139 overs to survive. And they have gone 17.1 of those. So another 32 overs to come for the day. Haven't seen Verasami Pramal as yet. And we haven't seen Gudakesh Moti. We have seen Kevin Sinclair with seven overs and the three paces. That's too wide. That should be a wide. It was almost off the strip. Very, very wide delivered here by Ali Mohammed. Just trying to tempt the left handers. And so far, Javon Buchanan at the wicket. Face over half centuries of delivery so far for his 18. Won't be tempted with those deliveries outside the awesome. That's the type of butter he is, Buchanan. He loves to spend time in the middle. And, and time is the master for the Scorpions in this encounter. Another 32 overs remaining in the day's play. That's a lot of overs. And 90 tomorrow. Edge. But it bounces. That was a full toss. It should be cashing in on those, no matter what the situation is. That was a freebie to add to your total. It was so late on the drive, it was so tentative in driving. We couldn't get that out of the middle of the bat. Good delivery this time. First two deliveries, or first three deliveries in this over. Going away from the left hander. This delivery came back very sharp. Javon Buchanan on this occasion was equal to the task. What is going to happen between now and the next? probably five six overs is that run scoring will be very limited given that Ali Mohammed tends to be economical and Kevin Sinclair who has been bowling from that Michael holding end hasn't given away many turning that one into the offside onside is Buchanan Good to see Buchanan playing with a straight bat as well. Ali Mohammed using the, the crease very well, using his angles. At Buchanan trying to force a fall shot in from Buchanan. Whipped away, gets the inner half of the bat down to Isaiah Thorne. Lucky there, Buchanan, he was late on it, was late swing. The over is completed at 46, 47 for one. You realize the last two deliveries in this over from Ali Mohammed. The last two deliveries just came back to the left-handed Buchanan. Buchanan must be mindful of that as well. Tends to play around his pad when the ball is straight. And that can be very, very dangerous for him. But so far, so good for Buchanan. It's up to 19 from 57 deliveries. And Kurt McKenzie 
just a single from 2020, 20, 27 deliveries. Just trying to build an innings is Kurt McKenzie and desperate in, in need of an innings as well. And the Scorpions badly need one from him. Kevin Sinclair will be continuing to chop on Buchanan. That's gone through the cover region for Buchanan. He's running hard. And two is all he will get. And the 49th run that for the Scorpions. Much better than the first innings, for sure. Buchanan looking the part here. 21 from 58. I was looking to cut that one away too close. It was flat and faster. Not bouncing as he expected either. So, so the surface is clean thus far. Turned away, tickled fine. That's gonna be runs. It's gonna be four of them. No stopping that. And the 50 comes up for the Scorpions. Patience being exhibited here by Buchanan. Waiting for that offline delivery from Kevin Sinclair. He gets it. And picks up another boundary to his account and takes him up to 25. The Scorpions are now up to 53 for one. Elegantly played here by Buchanan. Strain on the line of the leg stump this time around. Was Kevin Sinclair and the debiton quick to capitalize and get yet another boundary for himself and for the Scorpions who is still behind the eight ball still chilled by 366 runs if they are to win this six round encounter here at Sabina Park. A fourth boundary for Buchanan. 16 of his 25 runs in boundaries. Cut away. A mix up, a misfield. And everything going in Javon Buchanan's favor. He's going to get at least two. And they're coming back for a third on the throw from Vera Sami Pramal. Excellent running between the wickets by the Scorpions. But poor bit of work by the veteran Pramal. Allows them for three easy runs and valuable runs to the Scorpions as well. For Sami Pramal. Guilty on this occasion for Miss Field. Allows Buchanan for his 28th run of the country so far. And that completes the over at 56 for 1. The Scorpions chasing 419 runs for victory. Ali Mohammed will be continuing. Javon Buchanan, as we say, special welcome back to Andrew Chan. 
Yes, a pleasant good afternoon to you, Penny. Absolutely wonderful conditions here at Sabina Park for the final hour or so. A legitimate hour. We might go a little bit late again, as usual, to try to get in the 20 overs required. In fact, it's 30 overs remaining for the day's play. It was my goodness, Penny. <laughs> it's a long day indeed. Definitely a long day here at Sabina Park in Kingston, Jamaica. So far, the battles in the middle for the Scorpions doing a fantastic job. And the Divitan, Javon Buchanan. Yeah, good stuff from the debutant so far. The loss of the early wicket pegging Mark Jamaica. Well, not that they needed any pegging back per se. They're still behind by a good 363 runs. And the good thing about Javon Buchanan tends to play within his strength. Waiting on his deliveries to score. Not trying to create any shot what is not there. And that is the aim of a batter. If you're going to score runs, you have to play within your limits. And so far, Buchanan doing just for himself and also the Scorpions. Playing the ball under his eyes. Playing it very late. That is what we want to see players coming in on debut. Playing as if they want to stay at the regional level. And so far, so good for Buchanan. He's really putting up a show here at Sabina Park. Yeah, good point, there, Penny. <coughs> for over two, the Guyana Arp Eagles tends to be getting laps in the field first it was for Sammy Pramal and now is Perez not good by the guy in the RP Eagles it's very hot out there Angel and so far it's a long day as I mentioned yeah At an inside edge, I think, are they appealing for that? Had a court behind the wicket? No. There's no inside edge on that one. McKenzie survives. A tentative looking Kurt McKenzie this afternoon. Just a single. Tend to be reaching for the, the deliveries instead of getting close to the deliveries. And McKenzie lives to fight another day. He's a single from 29 deliveries. And Javon Buchanan, 29 from 67 deliveries. The Scorpions still require 362 for victory. Current run rate of 2.85. I'd like to say a special good afternoon to Victor Rutherford and Wayne Henry, our two former national sportsmen from Guyana, watching our stream from afar. Good afternoon to you gentlemen. Sinclair so far very economical. One for 16 so far into his ninth over. I got the wicket of Carlos Brown. Yeah, we hardly saw Sinclair bowling or, at all in the first innings. Uh, and already he's here. He's taken nine wickets. He's bowled nine overs, or up to nine overs, going on nine overs, and already taken the important wicket to fall. I, I and as usual, the excitable character that he is. But if you realize, you can look at the replay here. I think Buchanan 
should be on the front foot. That ball was full. There's no way he should be playing back. And hence why Kevin Sinclair was very excited. I think Buchanan misreading. And did you see the flip for the wicked penny? The flight of that delivery. No, but did he do his, do his trademark flip when he got rid of Carlos bro? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> no, he didn't. I think he's at the test level. <laughs> yeah, yes, he'll reserve that for the international game. Oh, another inside edge there. Really asking a lot of questions here, Sinclair. And it's a baptism of fire for Buchanan. And if you realize that final delivery, Buchanan tends to go across his stump and look to turn the ball towards the onside, and that can be very risky at times. Yeah, it was going on like so. You safe on going back with that one. 57 for one at the end of the 21st. Ali Mohammed will be continuing. Had Kurt McKenzie in the first innings as well. Scott behind. And so far, having the left handers in all sorts of bother late on day three. Tends to get the ball, the swing away from the left hander, and then a surprise one is the one that jack back into the left handers. Realize how tentative Kurt McKenzie is, even a full pitch delivery, which he normally puts away, is struggling to get away. So this goes to show how tentative these batters in the middle is. Reaching for that one, but gets it square enough, and Olat will run onto the Kingston Cricket Club for four. Lovely little shot there, my McKenzie. And boy, do the Jamaica Scorpions need in an innings from him today. Magnificent shot there from Kurt McKenzie. Came on the front foot, and shot that ball elegantly through the cover region. Shot of class from the man, Kurt McKenzie. Didn't try to over hit it. Just came on the front foot and caressed it through that cover region. Top shot by Mackenzie. His first of the contest. Sixty-one for one. The Scorpions. First shot of hunger from Kurt Mackenzie. Any youngsters watching that shot should learn something. It was just great for Mackenzie. I elbows full flow of the bat top shot from the West Indies test number three batter Kurt McKenzie haven't seen a century this season for him in the regional cricket and I guess this should be the perfect opportunity for, for him It's a glorious day at Sabina Park for cricket. Excellent sunshine. Cool breeze blowing across the ground as well. Very humid in the coverage of box though for. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I wish we could get some of that breeze coming through. Good 
delivery this time good delivery excellent delivery you could see that delivery shape back into the left-handed mckenzie played it well in the end though Andrew. yep played it well in the end And all them Ali Muhammad isn't exactly, I, I wouldn't call him. Uh, and there's a shot at the Blue Hawaii and Jerome Foster. Being very pensive at the cricket there. Resplendent in his lovely jersey. <laughs> Getting some cool breeze as well. It's very hot in the commentary box, so why not mm. get some cool breeze? Well played by Mackenzie. Rid that nicely and just open that down to third man Ronaldo Ali Mohammed I was just going to make the point that he's not exactly f uh, extreme pace he's more of a medium pace at best dead touch freebie easy pickings for Kurt McKenzie just rolled that ball down to the vacant third bone boundary for his second boundary in the over a 31 run partnership from 82 deliveries between Kurt McKenzie and the David Tunch of Hound Buchanan these two in the middle doing a fantastic job so far for the Scorpions. Yeah. They're going to get comfortable, Penny, because we're in for a long session this afternoon. Well, that completes the 22nd at 65 for 1. Yeah, some 28 overs or 27 overs that should be left in a day's play. Of course, there were two innings breaks when the Guyana Harp Eagles closed off their innings at 147 for four. And then the Jamaica Scorpions, who were pulled down this morning for 153. The Blue Hawaiian, he's uh, looking at doing some drumming as well, Penny, it looks like. Okay, he's listening to some music as well. Mm. I don't know if it's the music of his lovely, the lovely woman that call him 24-7. <laughs> He's always on the phone or messaging, WhatsApp, what have you. Well, in fact, he's an analyst at TVJ. Mm. So maybe he's getting a call <laughs> for the work as well. Big man at TVJ. I'm certainly jealous of him getting to sit down and uh, take in some of that lovely breeze he had to buy in a bar. So am I. <laughs> Batting for long hours here in the commentary box. As, as our Javon Buchanan batting for long hours in the middle for the Scorpions. We want to make a mark that he deserved to be at this regional level. And so far, he's putting value on his wicket. Batting with a purpose as well. Batting at home. In front of your own even in front of your wife that should be amazing for him as well punch off the back foot out to the man at point can't prevent another single to Buchanan that's, that's Sammy cricket Pramal. from him though uh, the run he pushed it maybe a little harder than he would have liked he probably would like to play that with softer hand got to the field fairly quick Pramal did extremely well through very close to the stumps with Mackenzie's fleet between the wickets with Sammy Pramal, not the quickest of feelers for the RP Eagles in Swai. But he did go to his strong side, which is his left side, so it's easy for him to pick up. In Swai, the Scorpions putting pressure on him as well. 34 years of age, fairly young as well. For the age that he's played regional cricket now, Andrew, I could see him, it's a bit old for you. Yeah. <laughs> Quite so. 17. Ishan Mutaram. 
Jalen Square, they're appealing for a leg before. Maybe going down leg side. Kevin Sinclair is not happy at the end of the over. 66 for one. Nothing doing, nothing doing said by Joel Wilson. Let's look at the replay here. Ooh. And Ooh, the back maybe just deal. striking, turning a little bit too much outside the line of the off some. Mighty close there. Mighty and close indeed. Mighty, mighty close indeed. I <laughs> it think it was. I think if the umpire had given that out, I don't think Mackenzie would have too much questions about it. Well, let's look at it again. Pitch in line straight and mo seemed to be spinning past Armstrong. Excellent call by Joel Wilson. Yeah. Excellent call. Good work by the cameraman as well. Pitch spinning up past Armstrong. Excellent call. Joel Wilson. It's absolutely magical delivery and it it's time we see that man per mall come into the wicket now. The man with vast experience. The man with six hundred and thirty first class wickets. Man with a five wicket haul in the first innings. A man with thirty three five wicket haul as well. That will he get his 34th in the afternoon session? <laughs> well, the Scorpions will be hoping that don't happen here at Sabina Park in this session. Yeah. Maybe He's not in this game any at all. Absolutely dictating his own field here. And why not? I think he's been around the scene for over a decade now playing for the Guyana Up Eagles. Very experienced. And hence why he can't dictate his pace on the field. I still would prefer to see two slips spinning, especially with the left arm spinner. you bowling to left-handed batters. And this time he starts with a bit of a loosener, but he gets away with that one. As does when you're great, you just get away with anything. <laughs> Maybe Kurt McKenzie playing the name, not the ball. <laughs> For Sammy Promal. Wonderful name in regional cricket for a number of years. The leading wicket taker as well. And if you look at age 34, bowling left arm spin. I think he can play up to 37, 38. If you look at a Chadwick Walton, still playing at 38. Maybe Chadwick Walton will be in the Scorpion team for round seven as well. Mm -hmm. So it goes to show how you take care of the body, the fitness of you. Very important, the key of lifestyle is wrapping that the That appeal for a leg before. How did that one miss everything? Well, 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 absolutely brilliant stuff here from Pomal and Sinclair. I tell you what, Javon Buchanan. Let's look at the replay here. Hartmus in his mouth, Buchanan. Oh, just outside the off stump. Excellent mm. call this time around. But he is batting. I mean, if you look at Buchanan, he's on an outside off stump line. So that will help him. And that one is through. It kept low. He ungainly sweep. And he's going to get a fortuitous boundary here, I think. It just may be a bottom edge on that one. But very, very lucky there that that didn't dribble back onto the stump. Yeah, Russia blood shot there from Buchanan. That ball wasn't there for that shot. If you realize that ball was a full pitch delivery. Instead of hitting the ball through the covers or down to mid-off, Buchanan tends to look to hit the ball amid wicket area. Buchanan and there's actually a, like, a delightful gap in the covers, which is there for the batters to, tr to go at. Buchanan need to be careful here, Andrew. Please, that one a lot more sensibly. At the end of the over, 70 for one. Last two overs. Scorpions has been on the slack side of things. Need some loose shot, but good for the Scorpions. Two batters still in the middle and fighting on for their country. Kurt McKenzie. We know normally he's an aggressive player. So far, just a 9 from 37 deliveries. And Buchanan, excellent so far. 34 from 83 deliveries. 
accumulating I think seven fours in his knock so far seventy one for one not a bad start here by the scorpions realize Diana Arp Eagles desperate to break this partnership and the Scorpions holding tight here in the last session of the three at Sabina Park Kurt McKenzie and Javon Buchanan both doing an outstanding job in the middle for the Scorpions three four nine is required if the Scorpion are to win this round six match here at Sabina Park they are not allowing Kevin Sinclair to get any wicket here. He got one earlier. The only wicket to fall was Carlos Brown. But since there, the Scorpion lock shop here at Sabina Park. delivery equal to the task is Kurt McKenzie to close out the 25th at 70 for one a maiden Action resumes here. <coughs> Appeal for a run out as uh, Buchanan was searching for a run against Pumal that wasn't on. He set off. Mackenzie didn't go anywhere. And just about got back in time. Good work by Savory taking the ball in front of the stumps again. Savory. Have an outstanding game so far as well. Score 155 in the first innings. Career best for him as well. That's a nice straight bunt, but it'll just be a single. So another 24 overs remaining in the day's play. Two batters in the middle so far. Batted some 22 overs between both. And hence why you see Kurt McKenzie face. 44 deliveries and Javon Buchanan face 85. For 128 deliveries between both. A loud appeal. Nothing doing, said umpire Christopher Wright. Yeah, the Diana Hop Eagles are asking a lot of questions. Yeah, let's have a look at the replay on this one. And the umpire is about to stay strong in the face of adversity. He 
Get him outside the line of the off stump. Excellent decision once more. Quicker through the year this time to complete the 26th at 71 for a loss of one. Another maiden this time around. From yeah, there just one run in the over, so there's not a maiden there for Permon. Yeah, run down to Long on from Buchanan. To shut off the scoreboard here at Savannah Park. Domino tournament going on as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's what's going on in the corner there. See if our cameraman, Kadir Muhammad, can get a close up shot of the dominoes going on by the scoreboard. Let's see how good his zoom is. Sinclair to continue. I haven't seen Moti yet. I'm sure we'll see him at some point. So far, Buchanan at the wicket, Andrew, look very compact so far. Look like you have a plan as well. And why not on debut? What a time to come out with a hundred on debut. That would be a plus for him. But so far, but responsible. Nothing rush for him. Just a one rush of blood shot. Ninety deliveries fee so far by Javon Buchanan. That completes the twenty-seven. Another maiden at seventy-one for one. Taking a look at the other games going on in the regional four-day series. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, they progressed in ninety-five for two batting. Oh, they declared at 95 for 2 um, after posting 591 for 7. The combined campuses and colleges require 382 to win with 9 wickets remaining. They are currently 67 for 1. Barbados is the one team that made a big total and enforced their follow one. They made 542 for 9, bowled out the Leewards for 288. And the Leewards in their second innings are currently 98 for 1. Mikhail Louis not out on 45. Uh, Kyron Powell has just lost his wicket. Taking a look at the Leeward Islands first innings, well, it was the pacer, Kamabach, taking 3 for 48, as well as Ruston Chase, who did the majority of the damage. And I can't seem to get the score on the West Indies Academy game. Unless that game has absolutely been closed out already. And the news from uh, our... From Dylan Sharma, our producer, says that game has actually been completed. Yeah, the Windward, Al Windward Volcano is actually won by 158 runs. So A they, lovely um, shot. Lovely shot by Kurt McKenzie. Over mid off. Flight to delivery. He came down the wicket. And tremendous timing as well. Lovely shot. Yeah, Set. good cricket from him. So, yeah, the uh, Academy were bowled out for 121. In their second inning, so that's unfortunate for them. Good win for the Volcanoes. 
Shamar Springer, four for 30. And in terms of the batting, Teddy Bishop again with a good score of 47. Other than that, not much batting at all at the end of the over here live, 75 for one. Good partnership building here between Kurt McKenzie and Javon Buchanan, both players doing an outstanding job for the Scorpions. 28 overs gone. Another 21 remaining in the day's play. And then 90 tomorrow. That's a lot of cricket left to be played here, Anjo. Quite so, Penny. Quite so. Make that 111 overs remaining in the game. That's a lot. Goes back and cuts this one, but doesn't make enough connection on it to get past that pillar of back at point. Is Buchanan. Buchanan there on this occasion does miss out on a boundary. A loose delivery there from Kevin Sinclair. Not often you see a loose delivery from Sinclair. The important thing with Buchanan, Andrew, he plays with a straight bat, and that's a plus for him. Not playing around the deliveries, that is good for him. But coming down with the street, but it seems he, he th I like. I think he's getting a bit bogged down here, Buchanan. I mean, yes, the spinners are bowling quite well. He's uh, tried some rash shots here. Um, he has to be very, very careful not to get too bogged down. But he know there's an opportunity for for him here to really stake a claim in uh, first class cricket. Goes for the sweep this time and he gets connection on this one. On the delivery badly lined on the leg side. He'll get a four for that and that will relieve from some of his pressure on the young Batter making his debut here for the Scorpions. Indeed. Paddle line delivered this time by Kevin Sinclair. And Javon Buchanan accept quite easily. And picks up his seventh boundary to complete yet another over at 79 for loss of one. Drinks in the evening session.
Action resumes here at Sabina Park. Uh, with the Jamaica Scorpions in their second innings, 79 for one. Chasing a mammoth total for victory. They're still behind by 300 odd runs. And the first runs after the drink break, a quick single by Buchanan, I think that is. No, that's McKenzie. They're trying to play Permore with a little bit more positivity. As that man, Jerome Foster, resumes duties here in the commentary box. One ounce sweet and sour, half ounce curacao, three ounces pineapple juice, three quarter ounce light rum, three quarter ounce vodka. And that's how you make a blue Hawaiian. And that's the color of the shirt my good friend Posy is wearing here. <laughs> I hope he doesn't have a grass skirt for his Hawaiian celebrations later. That's certainly not something I want to see. <laughs> Who I know don't want any is Javon Buchanan. He's batting solidly. It looks apart. It looks like a controlled player. Yeah, it's been a good little innings here from him. And he's uh, now faced 100 deliveries, so excellent stuff from him. Uh, and again, it's a, it's a chance for him to, to make his name in first-class cricket. 339 required for victory. Edged, and he's gone there. That is the end of Buchanan, unfortunately. The second wicket falls as we are now waxing lyrical. We are Sammy Pramal strikes. It's uh, maturity over youth here at Sabina Park. That's my fault. Once I praise someone, they normally, they normally fall to the bowler who is on. Not going to happen again. But, importantly for the Harpy Eagles, because it felt as if the momentum was just shifting a bit to the Scorpions. Not to say that they were going to get those 419 runs, but this partnership was creating some problems. They looked so well set. But Pramal, the magical man, outside the off stump, and this one went on with the arm. Didn't spin towards the stumps. And Buchanan went with hard hands towards the ball, worrying that the ball was, would be spinning, spinning towards the stumps. And it takes the outer half off the bat. And a good catch from Kevin Anderson. And 39 for Javon Buchanan. Can't feel good about himself. But I think he'd be kicking himself that he didn't get a bigger score because he was well set. 101 deliveries for his 39. And Brandon King makes his way out to join his club mate, Kurt McKenzie. Buchanan is also a Kingston CC player. But it's a massive ask of the Scorpions who have been struggling all season with the bat in hand. Yeah, well, arguably, this is the, uh, the, the two most recognized batters in the Jamaica lineup, so it's up to the two of them right now. Brandon King, he'll need to take a leaf out of Tevin Imlach's book and really play a captain's knock here. Kirk McKenzie hasn't had a, a decent score all season despite the quality and the class of the man. Um, so he would definitely be looking for some runs here. One thing about King is that he looks different from everybody else when he's batting. It looks as if he has almost the time of the week to play yeah. the yeah. shots. And then he somehow contrives to get out, which, yeah. is, which is the unfortunate and sad state of affairs of McKenzie's performance so far. And that is a successful end to an over for Verasami Pramal. His sixth wicket of the contest. His 631st in first class cricket. And I bet you he's going to get 700 at some point if he continues on this track. But this surface though, as you saw in the first innings where you see some dominoes being played. I don't think it's a better choice than watching the cricket, but it's certainly worth some enjoyment it's a good a good game are you a big domino fan 
Uh, I, I do play it. I, I don't think it's as big culturally in Trinidad as it is uh, in, in other islands around. Yeah, we, we tend to play cards more, which is a, a game called All Fours, um, oh. which is a, a local game. So cards are more prevalent. But certainly in the, in the other islands, uh, Tin Lucia, I know, for example, Domino's is very, very big. Guyana. And Guyana, yeah. yeah. Jamaica has a plethora of domino tournaments. Sinclair continuing. Haven't seen, per, uh, not per mall, we haven't seen Moti yet for the morning, for the afternoon. I'm sure he'll be along shortly at some point in terms of bowling. I think they're just being very fair to Kevin Sinclair because he bowled only one over in the first innings. So he's now gotten this extended spell, 13.2 overs, only broken by the T break. And he's not doing a bad job. That's an appeal. And uh, nothing given there. The umpires have been very, very tight on, on these uh, leg before appeals here. Let's have a close look at this one. Seems as if it was going on with the arm. It, it looks straight from where we are sitting. But again, we're not in line. Yeah, that's missing the stumps. That's a yeah. good call. One thing I can tell you is never use a wiki keeper to judge how close or how accurate a leg before wicket decision is. Well, he said <laughs> if Marlon Pinnock is behind the stumps, you wouldn't want to depend on him because he'd be leaping and flipping and doing all sorts of Kevin Sinclair actions behind the stumps. But one thing with Sinclair is that he's targeting that front pad. He's ensuring that you get that bat in front of the pad because he's bowling so straight and he's bowling so quickly, it's difficult for you to use your feet to him to negate anything, any turn, any spin because of the quickness of the, of the line that he's bowling. And he's been absolutely accurate. 14 overs bowl, conceded just 21 runs, taken the wicket of uh, Carlos Brown. Three hundred and thirty-nine for victory. It's not an impossible task, but it is improbable. And the dominant players almost have a security guard with that fellow standing up over them and watching the game intently. Not easy going for the Scorpions. 31 overs bowled, 80 runs scored. I want to see a little bit more rotation because I don't think you can occupy the crease for 139 overs and not score. It's going to get you into problems because the feeders are going to come around the bat pretty shortly. Smacks that one nicely, does Brandon King. And it bobbles by that man Moti there at Long Hall. But it's a single to get the Jamaican skipper off the mark. That was a dangerous shot. I think he was trying to hit that over extra cover. But he wasn't to the pitch of the ball. It felt just and, short. Yeah, and it came off the toe of the bat. Luckily for him, it didn't get closer to the middle because it would have gone straight to Gudakesh Moti. And that's a dangerous shot from... Brandon King would have been livid if he got dismissed like that. It was a nothing shot, really. Well, I think that's a challenge that Brandon King has. We know Mackenzie would like to, like to stay and occupy the crease. Brandon King, a bit more impetuous, a bit more adventurous, a bit more aggressive. And he likes to feel... Oh, yeah, that well was played the there by Mackenzie in the end. Yeah, that one spun out of the rough. Yeah, those prominent foot marks outside the left-handed uh, left batting crease fall caused by the bowler's follow-through. 
Advances, yeah. Top shot. Excellent yeah. shot. Use of the feet. And he was a little bit worried about the, the areas in front of him. So he negated that. And that's a beautiful looking shot. Yeah, it's an authentic cricket shot that he's gotten for six as well. So it's gone for the absolute maximum there. Wonderful shot by McKenzie. I mean, it, when a batter uses his feet against a spinner and it works, it looks so brilliant. See what he does now. And a thick outside edge this time for Permol. And uh, Kenzie will get a single to bring King back on strike. 88 for two now. Yeah. And what, what you don't want either, and this is why I'm saying that you, not to say that you're going to be scoring four or five runs and over, but you don't want Moti and Pramal to have consistent amount of deliveries at you at one batter for a prolonged period of time. They are going to get you out. They are going to get you out. They're, they're experienced enough. And the Jamaicans at this point, what they have to their advantage is that they have a left hand right hand combination at the end of the over. 88 for two. So that will certainly help them in uh, throwing the bowlers off their line. I don't think Sinclair has actually bowled to the king as yet, so that might be interesting. Cross section of the fans there where Jerome Foster was sitting down talking to his various women earlier during the break in commentary. <laughs> Looking through his list of the bevy of ladies on his contacts to see who will, who will escort him to the Hawaiian dance tonight. Cut nicely, and you'll get some freedom here. That's a beautiful shot by Kirk McKenzie. Just off the back foot, a little bit of width offered, and cut away nicely behind backward point for four. Yeah, too short. And McKenzie showing his qualities. Use the depth of the crease there. Rocked back. And got it into the boundary for four. That's a good shot. What you want to see from the Scorpions is that they mix the aggression with smartness. Don't want to get overly aggressive. And if they can probably get to 100 and it's now 456, it's probably 115, 120. It should feel a lot better about themselves because of a really bad showing in that first innings and it has really left them on the back foot and steering down the barrel of a heavy defeat but I, cricket is a game of glorious uncertainties it's never over until it's over a little bit too close there for the cut shot from Mackenzie got away with it and that completes the over the 33rd at 92 for two. Mackenzie 25. King has won. Yeah, just approaching about a couple of minutes before 5 o'clock here in Jamaica. That one kept a little bit low, drifted wide. And then King just about getting some bat on her to get it to mid on. Got it in an awkward position there. Yeah, could have got a bottom edge that one onto the stump. Has to be careful here, Brendan King. It's a nice push into the cover region. Excellent fielding there.
attempted sweep, but going down the leg side, so King will uh, not be in trouble there in terms of the LBW. Yeah, sweeping on line there. That one is down the leg side. No worries for King. It's an open stance to access that ball through the offside. Oh, that is beautifully done. Yeah, he slapped that away disdainfully from King. Stand and deliver stuff. Yeah, extra cover didn't have a long way to go. But the power and the timing of Brandon King and really got over that ball and slapped it into the boundary. It takes the score up to 96 for two. <laughs> and there's that man. Pinnock. Marlon Pinnock. The legend. And of the over, 96 for two. Lone spectator taking a phone call on top of the third level of the Kingston Cricket Club stand where she has all to herself, actually. And nobody up there but her. That has to be a very private conversation. She's clearly talking to Marlon Pinnock. Because anything Marlon Pinnock says on the phone is not inappropriate and has to be a private conversation. Sinclair continues. I'm a little bit surprised that Moti hasn't gotten a, a ball as yet. It's now a 16th over for Sinclair. Unless they plan to use Moti all day tomorrow. <laughs> well, I suspect there was a right-hand, left-hand combination they were using. Oh my, she has company up there now. The conversation is not private anymore. Not sure if Marlon Pinnock is aware that the lady he's talking to has company with him. Oh, that is in front. Is it? They Not in the eyes of the Joel Wilson. My, my, my. Yeah, that looked close. I think that might be a bit of an issue with height there. Let's look at it. Round the wicket is seen clear. Oh, well, I think the Scorpions got away with one there. I think I, I still think that was high. That one bounced a little bit more. And now that woman has a lovely vantage point there in the corner. This should be interesting here. Yes? Sinclair, the first time he's going to get a chance to bowl to Brandon King. See how well he adjusts his line for the right-handed batter. Let's have a look at the replay on this LBW shot here. Yeah, very yeah. close. I think that that is very, very close. Yeah, they've been, uh, they've been uh, some very, very good LBW shots from the Harpy Eagles spin bowlers, Sinclair and Pamol. Uh, Seven for two with Scorpions chasing 419. Final 28 minutes of play. Don't think this Harpy Eagles are going to bowl those 14 overs in 25 26 minutes. It'll be 
a lucky escape for the Scorpions here because the fewer overs they bat, the better it is for them. <laughs> well, the other thing is if they decide to just hunker down, then the Harp Eagles just spin through these overs quicker than you can see. Jamaica. By the looks of it, it's going to take a lot of overs from these spinners. And you can see that it, and it's going to come back to those two moments. It was never a 154 wicket. And it was never a 61 for 6 to a 424 type of wicket. Yeah, that's, that's quite true there. Dancing up the pitch, this McKenzie this time. Gets it down to long on for a single. The makers trickle up to 98. I mean, there's always that argument of curry chicken versus chicken curry, and certainly it's been all chicken curry for this game. In terms of the Harpy Eagles having control of this. I don't know if they would say goat curry as well. But uh, the scorpions are certainly in a very hot bubbling pot at the moment. Another tidy over from Vera Semi Pramal comes to an end. And it's 98 for two, the Jamaica Scorpions. Yeah, but at this point, I mean, Vera Semi Pramal has probably sent down so many deliveries in, test, in uh, first class cricket that it's almost a matter of just just going through the motions with him. He knows exactly what to do. His body will remember, his body memory, his muscle memory will be, will be in place now. Uh, you see as such of uh, some of the schoolboys who are coming in to watch the cricket at the end of the day. It's a Friday evening. It's good to see them here as opposed to on a street corner or hanging around in, in crossroads and halfway tree getting up, uh, getting up to mischief. I don't know if it's a, if it's a similar situation with, with traveling school kids here, but they will pick the maxi or the bus that they might want to go home in because that maxi on bus has uh, more entertainment and more excitement. So it's like a Caribbean thing. <laughs> so me, like no, me, I, I just wanted to get home. So whatever <laughs> one was the first one that came around. Even if it was the old guy, you could barely see the road straight. At least he came first. <laughs> And he's safer. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Why <laughs> delivery down the leg side? Uh, I think Sinclair needs to take some of the pace off the ball to see if he can extract enough from the wicket. He's known to be a containing type of bowler, a, an economical type of bowler. But I just believe in this on this surface, the amount of runs he has to play with can take a couple of risks. That was a good delivery. Yeah, really good delivery there. But the other thing, of course, is that uh, while Sinclair recently made his Red Bull debut for the West Indies and has done really well. His primary training and primary mode of operation would have been white ball cricket, yeah. which, of course, is containment. And yes, you can vary your pace as well in white ball, but it's not as, as pronounced, of course, as in the red ball game. Absolutely glorious shot there by McKenzie. His straight driving is something of pure class, and he brings up the Jamaican 100 with a towering four down to long on. This is the Kurt McKenzie we know here in Jamaica. He loves to go aerially, and especially down the ground. It's a very safe place to hit down the ground. Yeah. You hardly get into trouble when you go that route. But it's also a dizzy height for him. Once he gets into the 30s, it becomes problematic. He always looks good getting to 30, 40. But it's what happens from there. And for Jamaica Scorpion's sake and West Indies' sake, as I keep on stressing, he needs a big score in this tournament. 
Yeah, I like I like McKenzie. I mean, of course, if you look at the two young left-handers that have come into the the West Indies team, it's Athanas and McKenzie. I like Athanas more. I think I think he he's such a class player, and really has the the world at at his fingertips. McKenzie, I guess you would say, is a more conventional left-hander, um, but certainly a very quality player. Was too, too close. Yeah, too close to cut there. But it, it, I, I, with all these players, every player that we mentioned, I mean, they're good players, they're excellent players. That mental aptitude, that mental tenacity, that's what's missing there. Good shot from Brandon King. Just a single down to that man, Mooty. Positive in how he gets his singles, Brandon King. Hits it hits the ball just as hard as if he's trying to get a boundary. Gives it a thang. Yeah, I guess hammers it down the ground. But you know he's looking for one. Bit surprised that the guy and he's haven't been a little bit more attacking around the bat. I'd expect a, another fielder in close. Yeah, well, I mean, especially with the left arm spinners, I would always want a second slip in position. For me, given that there is a bit of rough outside that off stump. I'll be tempted to either get a leg gully in or another man under the bat. I have 400 runs to play with. Yeah. Dancing up the pitch again. He goes over cover. Does he get enough of it? He does indeed. And he gets another wonderful six there. Didn't quite get to the pitch of that. But at least he maintained his shape there, McKenzie. I can tell you what's extraordinary about yeah. this shot is that he took his hand off the bat. His bottom hand came off, but the top hand gave him that extension through the ball. So even though he wasn't to the pitch of the ball, the top hand took over and just went right through. And because the mid-off is in place and not a long off, it was a safe shot in the end. Back to this one, and Permal is asking the question again. And another little blip in McKenzie's mental state here. At the end of the over, 109 for two. Let's have a look at the replay on that one. Yeah, I think we're going to have a bowling change soon as well. That's a, yeah, it's going down the leg side for sure. I'm going to be seeing good Akesh Moti. But Kirk McKenzie has figured out how he's going to score his runs off these spinners. And it's going to be down the ground. But what he has done well is that when he's defended... He's picked up the length of the ball pretty early and he's used up the depth of the crease to go right back into the crease and watch the ball onto the bat because he knows not many deliveries are spinning away or viciously spinning back towards him. So he can then trust the bounce to play under his eyes. And because there's no one behind him in that leg gully region, even if it pops on him, he can still turn it behind him and he doesn't have to worry about a, a man catching him at the leg gully region so it's a smart move in this case had the field been different you'd probably want him to be a little bit more forward and you want to get him forward if i'm the captain i'll be putting another man under the bat and asking my bowlers to be on that three-quarter length in front of him yeah that man moti gets a chance to come in now yeah so the Kevin Sinclair experiment is done with for now. I think he's going to be bowling a lot of overs tomorrow. I think they're, they're just resigned to the fact that they have to come back tomorrow. That's a nice drive by King. Pleasant. But I, I like what I'm seeing from Brandon King so far. He's, he's willing to stay there. He's willing to go the distance. They've got they've gotten a 30 partnership in, in very quick time, which is good stuff from them. And you can see that Brandon King's contribution is just seven. So he looks like he's trying to set himself up for the long innings. 
Um, and that's what you want to see. You want to see that adaptability from your cricketers. It'll be interesting to see how uh, McKenzie play, how Permal and McKenzie do battle with in a second in, in the in the over afterwards. But I would still like to see McKenzie try to m maneuver the strike, get yeah. get those singles. Yes, okay, you can hit Permal inside out. But then what happens when he drops back that mid off to long off? That's a very good point. And what I, what you want to see is not him just hanging around and waiting for that boundary ball. Get that boundary, but get a single. Yeah. Get another man facing. So Pramol has to be thinking up another strategy. And then Pramol has to adjust to the right-handed king as well. A faster one through, but badly directed by Mr. Mooji. That's about 50 minutes left in the day's play. According to my calculations... But of course, you know, Jamaican time moves a little bit slower than everywhere else. Not when it comes to cricket, of course. Cricket is a, a, a game of finite and infinite numbers. That completes the over, the 39th at 110 for two. And some would say that Kurt McKenzie's batting like a dream. 36 from 92 balls. Hasn't offered a chance. As yet, that is what you want. I, well, you say that. I think he's been he's lucky to still be there after some of the LBW shouts that we saw <laughs> from Mackenzie and Pramol. From Sinclair. <laughs> I mean, ad admittedly, there were marginal decisions that could go either way. But if they were given out, you wouldn't. Re you really wouldn't say that was a poor decision from the umpires, who've been under a lot of pressure here today. Definitely thought the the last. LBW short could have gone into the, could have gone in the favor of the of the bowling team. But you could probably say that it has cancelled out after the Tevin Imlock decision earlier today. Because I, I, I still believe that that ball was cannoning into Midland Lake. Good stuff again here from Brandon King. Does he get that through? Yes, he does indeed. That was a delightful shot from Brandon King. Got to the pitch a bit. And he didn't try to hit it too hard. It was more about placement that time from King. And it's good to see from him. I'm going to tell you how great this shot was. There's a long off in place. He's fairly wide to his left. And he had absolutely no chance of getting there. And he picked the gap to perfection, Brandon King. He looks a lot different from the from the Biff and Buffer Brandon King that we knew. And uh, I, 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 I am extremely happy to see it. Yeah, because in, in terms of I hate to use the word mercenary. But of course these days uh players are pigeonholed as, as mercenaries or T twenty journeymen. And uh for Brandon King to, to show the maturity to come back and lead the Scorpions. And, and, and show his versatility in red ball cricket. I, I, it's very good to see. I think he has a lot to learn in terms of captaincy. Uh, but in terms of batting, he's shown, he's shown that he has that adaptable nature within him. Across the line, but gifting down leg, I would think. Uh... And of the over, 114 for two, 40 overs bold. Not a shot that I would like to see at this time of the day, but it was clearly going down the leg side. Yeah, clearly going down the leg side. That was pitched outside the leg stump as well. Yeah, I think I, you're, you're right in the sense that it's not a shot you'd like to see at this point of the day. But I think the shot was there yeah, for was the there, offering. Yeah. So good selection by Brandon King, even though the execution wasn't as lovely as you would have liked. And I, I think, I mean, that it's a lesson in playing the four-day game. You don't win the war 
unless you win the little battles. And one of the little battles right now is for Mackenzie and King to end the day unbeaten. <coughs> Get through that little battle and you have a full day tomorrow, 90 odd, maybe 100 overs to chase down 305 runs, which is reasonable. And if they can get, let, let, let's say they have to chase 299 tomorrow. So they have, they have that moral in their sense that, okay, we've gotten past that, uh, that, that 300 run mark, you know. And then this innings again here, Fuzzy. I mean, of course, cricket, as we know, is a game of glorious uncertainties. They only scored 153 in their first inning. Here they're up already up to 114. Marlon Pinnock is back in the commentary booth. Clearly his uh, phone call to that lady on top of the Kingston Cricket Club didn't work out as nicely as he would have liked. He's, ha he's back here hanging with the boys. But the other thing, I mean, I think Guyana obviously still has most of the most of the cards. The, 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 the deck is still stacked in their favor for sure. But I want to see how they approach tomorrow. At the end of the over, 114 for two. Let's just say. Yeah, coming back to my point here, Fozzy, just, let's just say uh, King and Mackenzie seize through the night and then bat for the first, uh, most of the first session tomorrow. And, of course, they would have whittled away at the total. You would expect that at that point it would drop maybe the total required would be 240, something like that, which sets up a platform for them to chase. How do Guyana adapt to that? Another delivery down the leg side. And it definitely, I, it seems that it is going to be a ploy with Permol. Whatever he strays in line, they are going to try to sweep, which is good because they need to get some runs off him. He had a complete and utter stranglehold on them in the first innings, 5 for 55. Already 1 for 34. Nice drive again here by Brandon King. Pleasant cricket. Some more changes in the field. I think Vera Sami Pramal is tired of being carted down the ground. He's going to plug that gap. Restrict that scoring option for Kurt McKenzie to see what his next option is. Now what he has done is moved Tevin Imlock to mid-off, really. A long and then there's a long, long off, off is him, in place. Yeah. Yeah. A very... A people are caught behind on the leg side. Savory taking an appeal from the Marlon Pinnock book. But nothing doing there. Very vociferous, very animated. Obviously, shut up shop now. Seven minutes to go to the close of play. Right decision to do. Just a little bit surprised that Guyana have gone a little bit defensive. You can risk giving away another 10 15 runs. That one spun and spun out of the rough. That should give them some encouragement for tomorrow. And it spins all the way into the boundary for four buys. There's absolutely nothing at all. 
Kim or Savory could do about that. Yeah. Yeah, beating everybody there. And that is why I'm saying you can give away some more. When I say give away, not throw the ball on the bat, but you can, well, of you course can risk losing some runs. Well, the other thing is Mackenzie might have danced up the pitch at that one, but, but long on and long on back, that option isn't there for him anymore. Very good point. And End uh, of the over, 119 for two. Coming up to 5.30 now. It's now 5.24. I think that you'll probably have one over, depending on how the Scorpions batters go about negating the over. They have taken a long time to get started here now. Not seeing much urgency in the field from the Harpy Eagles either. There's a deep backward square leg, a long off, a sweeper on the cover boundary. Good Akesh Moti. Has only bowled two overs prior to this. And expect him to bowl a few more. And that's putting it mildly. You expect him to bowl a lot more tomorrow. Wouldn't be surprised if he starts off the day. For the Scorpions now, it's about getting Mackenzie and King to come back tomorrow. What they have done is reduce the required runs to under 300. That's a beautiful delivery with the arm, with the angle, sliding across Mackenzie, the left-hander. Kevin Anderson could be of interest. Anderson is feeling at first slip. Raymond Perez is that short leg. Straight mid-wicket in the captain. Takes the outer half of the bat of Mackenzie. Takes him to 37. I think you'll have another over. At least. Because Moti has one delivery to come. And that is the end of the 43rd. Partnership is 41. Scorpions fighting. Good spirited performance in the second innings. Uh, an insipid one in the first, where they folded for only 153. Innings was wrapped up on the very first ball this morning. Marquino Mindley caught behind off the bowling of Nile Smith. Starting the wrap up here. And the Harpy Eagles posted 147 for four declared Tevin Imlach leading the scorers once again the captain and Scorpion set for 19 to win they are now 121 for two they lost Carlos Brown with the score on 34 and Javon Buchanan went with the score on 90. And now, obviously, this will be the very last over. And
Kurt McKenzie, the left-hander, will be facing with a leg slip in position, a slip and a short leg. And Vera Sami Pramal bowls that one, two straight down the leg side. And now the mid-off is back to where he, he was for the duration of the innings. Oh, a missed chance. That was a dangerous shot. But luckily for Mackenzie, it went past Savory. It's spun between the bat and the pad. I don't think the coaching staff would be pleased with Mackenzie if he was dismissed like that at this time of the evening. Where was he going? It spun right between the bat and the pad. Luckily for him, Savory was unsighted. And by the time he got up, let's see if he got up too early. No, he didn't. He, he was just unsighted. And the ball spun with some pace. That's probably the lot that the Scorpions need. And the umpire said two runs. Oh, so he took some bat. So that probably saved Mackenzie there. That's much better. Much more secured like that. A test player should be willing to withstand some pressure. Play that one from the crease. One delivery to come to close out the day's play. Partnership is valid at 43. King has 13. Mackenzie, 25. And that is it for day three. Mackenzie walks off. A couple of deliveries ago, he could have walked off in a different manner as a dejected player. But he's a little bit happier because he will restart tomorrow on 39. The Scorpions 123 for two, chasing an improbable 419. But Singh is believing, and they will always have hope that they can get 296 on tomorrow's final day. But the guy in the Harpy Eagles must feel as if they're still in command of this game. The Scorpions handicapped by injuries. Their yeah, wiki keeper Romain Morris didn't even take the field for the second innings of the Guyana Harpy Eagles innings. But it's left to be seen if he can bat again. But Brandon King, 13 the captain, and Kurt McKenzie, 39. They will resume the battle on tomorrow's fourth and final day here in this sixth round regional four day clash between the Scorpions and the Harpy Eagles. So. Until 9.57 a.m. Jamaica time, 10.57 in Guyana. I'm Jerome Foster. See you then.